Don't act like you don't know what this is, bitch. The milkman and I have too many hoes to entertain. You know the Cash App, you know the Venmo, PayPal, and all that. I don't give a fuck if you send us a bag of nickels. Just send that shit. Oh yeah, peace and love, punk. What you talking about, Mill Crank? That fucking cocksucker! Huh? Let's go, baby. Jesus H. Christ. Private Pile! Uh -huh. Why is your footlocker unlocked? Uh -huh. Private Pile, if there is one thing in this world that I hate, it is an unlocked footlocker! You know that, don't you? Uh -huh. If it wasn't for dickheads like you, there wouldn't be any thievery in this world, would there? They're created by man, we can solve them by man. Get out! Right. How did it get here? Oh. Uh, huh? Is Chow allowed in the barracks, Private Pile? Me? Are you allowed to eat jelly donuts, Private Pile? Because you are a disgusting fat body, Private Pile! Yeah, I understand. I got it in my head, dude. Then why did you hide a jelly donut in your footlocker, Private Pile? Hey, you gotta wake up in the morning and eat coffee, brother. Private Pile has dishonored himself? Me? And dishonored the platoon! I can do more than that in 24 hours. I have tried to help him, but I have failed. I took more things than you never had in your life. You people have not given Private Pile the proper motivation. I'm a tough guy. I've been doing this for all my life, brother. So, from now on, whenever Private Pile fucks up, I will not punish him. That's right. I will punish all of you. What the fuck? Everyone. They're paying for it. You eat it. Me? And exercise. One, two, three, four, five, nine, three, two. Yeah, I'm different from other people. Who you with? Hey, so, um, Casey didn't make it to the scores party yesterday because he had to go audition for How a men's magazine. Audition go. <laughs> How did it go? I was just talking to him about it. He goes... I don't know how it went. You know, they, they have to call you and tell you if you got the job. But he was like, some casting director, male casting director, needed to see him with his shirt off and his pants off. Uh-oh. You said that here in the morning like you knew. <laughs> Coco, I mean Casey. <laughs> Coco. What, what, what happened? You walked in. Like, was it a bunch of dudes there? No, no, it was just, it was just me. It was just, uh, you know, I was meeting with the dude. The, the, you mean there was no line of guys, no. just you? No, called you specifically? This is an, it's an appointment. Oh. Yeah. All right, it, was, so. it wasn't a cattle call. If it's an appointment, that means they really want to see you. <laughs> no, Casey. I heard so that it, was Casey making an appointment. Is it one guy? One dude, yeah. And, but, like, what does he say to you? Does he seem sort of femme? It's, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, like, all, all these guys, all of them are gay. I mean, you know, of course. <laughs> At least you think they are. Well, I know, I know they are. Right. I know by looking at them. Yeah. All right. When whatever. you're banging a guy, you know he's gay. <laughs> so what happened? You walk in. So you know, it's just that uncomfortable point where. Casey, they, take off your shirt. That's what they say. They say in slacks. They say, all right, let me see, let me see your body. <laughs> 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 yeah. What do you do, man? Like yeah. do you just like think you undress in front uh, of him? Like like a, like a, ch a chick. Well, you know, you just take your. You, know, <laughs> you do it slow or. Do you speak it's not like I do a strip tease or nothing. <laughs> Let me see your package. Well, that yeah. shirt seems cumbersome. And so, yeah. now, for this guy, you peel down. How many times have I asked you to see your body? You what is it, it private? <laughs> but what is the job? Like, what would they have you be doing? Uh, it's it's for, like, editorial work for this one magazine. That's, that's so we like pay, like, 100 bucks. No, nah, actually, it's more than that. No, it's not. Editorial, my girlfriend told me, is 150 bucks or something. No, it's for, it's, no they, they've, they do better than that. But it, plus, you know, you get it to tear it out. It's a tear sheet, yeah. yeah. That's but, important if you want to be a model. Right. If you have a tear sheet, because then you can take away, you know, take the tear sheet and show it to other fruits. From somebody else hired me. <laughs> Some of you other fruits hired me. You know, you know what the most uncomfortable Casey, thing is? Casey, I'm going to need, do they make you make muscles and stuff? 
Well, See, no, like they'll turned. say, they'll say, all right, uh, you know, move, <laughs> move your, uh, I, I breathe, you know, flex your abs this way, or, oh my or uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's incredibly gay and creepy and uncomfortable. Wow. But uh, oh, but the, the one the one thing that's, that's so uncomfortable, dude, <laughs> is every time you go, even on these like cattle calls and stuff like that. First, sometimes you take a Polaroid of you to yeah. see what you look like. Did they take Polaroids? No, this guy had like a real camera. Right. But, but sometimes they eat Polaroids when you go to these things. And, uh, so they, you take your, your shirt off and then some, most of the time they want to see your legs, right? Yeah. So you gotta take, it's like, it's like you get in like a rectal exam. You gotta take your pants and you put them down around, around your ankles. You know I mean? <laughs> so you stand in your underwear so they can see your legs and they oh. take a picture of you like that. Oh. And you can't look up tight. You gotta look like you're enjoying it or else they won't hire you. Yeah. You got to look comfortable with this. Yeah. Stop crying, Casey. <laughs> and you managed to do all this? Well, what do I care? It's, it's, you know, it's like, you know, in the summertime, that's how, you know, that's how I walk around. You play basketball like that. That's what you do. Is this in an office or what? Is it? No, they still look like most of these guys. So the guys' apartments. Yeah, they have, they have apartments and they have, like, studios. Are you serious? I was kidding. <laughs> no, they have studios in their apartments. Move the cat. Now put this hot dog between your ass cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> you blew off scores for that? Dude, I, I, you know, I can't turn nothing down at this point. Did you have fun? <laughs> no, I didn't have fun. Do you grease up? Do you? What do you do? No, I, I sometimes they, they, you know, make you put like uh, oil, put you know, like Crisco. a lotion. So it comes do they have a lotion you, or do you do? No, you, do, you know, I, I, I have a, a clause on that. I do that. Do some of the guys let the uh, casting director? I, I don't know. I've, I've never experienced that. Yeah. I wouldn't let nobody do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let no fruit touch me. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, fruit. Sure you would. What's okay, this fruit? Fruit? Why the help? anger, dude? That's no anger. It's just, so I don't the guy's want gay. Does. you got to call him a fruit. He's trying to give you work. I got nothing against him. Does but... anybody ever hit on you? There he goes, oh, you look good. Uh, you know what's funny, man? One time I, I, was, I was doing this thing, and I, you know, like I, was, I was doing stuff in underwear, yeah. and the guy goes, Okay, so what you got to do is you got to. I'm trying to clean this up because you got to take your your boys and and push them push them up. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, they they want that that shot of it was the, in the package of the, of the package. You got to we got to do is you put it on top oh, oh. instead of letting it hang. You put it on top. Oh. Oh, oh, God. Oh, what is going on? For an underwear ad? Yeah. Because <laughs> they want that, they want the... <laughs> that little bolt. Yeah. I don't you gotta understand steal any of it. Yeah. They, they want you to the take your boys and push them... push them up. And push them up. With your hand? Yeah. And they want to see them? Yeah, well, they want to see it in the, in through the, the underwear. underwear. Yeah. yeah. Push your boys up through your underwear. I got a feeling. Put your boys in place. These are rich gay guys who are just setting up auditions. This is like that scene in Boogie Nights where you know Mark Wahlberg's in the front of the car touching himself. They want Casey to just look at him. Nice. And you're alone with just one dude, right? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Was that yesterday? One dude? No, yeah, one dude. Yeah. Yesterday. Young KC, come in. Well, how many of these calls have you gone on? Uh, I've got a bunch of them. But, you know, <laughs> gee, that's hot. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Do you think there's like a network? There's like, you know, this guy yeah, you he'll, call he'll come up. and give you a good show. <laughs> yeah. He's naive. He's this idiot who works for the Howard Stern Show, real good looking guy. You just call him up and he'll show up and squeeze his boys. And <laughs> Tell him to shove his boys up. He'll do it. Yeah. Let's go into my bedroom. I mean, my office. <laughs> now, could you hold your nuts no, back with a spoon? All, all, these, all these ones are all <laughs> legit. Push it up with a spoon in my they're finger. All legit, they're all legit. They're all like, you know, they're all like right. photographers. Sure. Like the manager hooks it up, you know. So Don't I, call this a bedroom. It's a studio. When do you find out if you got the job? I don't know. They're supposed to let me know. Have okay. you ever gotten a job from these? Yeah, I actually got a uh, couple of them. Uh -huh. So what do you do? Like, you take off your shirt. Yeah. And then you take off your pants. <laughs> and yeah. Then you, open and your then, mouth and close your eyes. And, like, <laughs> and then you. So after you take off your pants, like, do you take them all the way off or you leave them down by your ankles? No, if they're just taking a Polaroid, you just pull them down real quick, and they just want to see what your legs look like. Right. Oh, so what, my. So what was yesterday? You your shoes off. Yesterday, I was just in a pair of shorts. What, what kind of shorts? Like short shorts where your ass shoes hang out? No, just like regular, like, you know, nothing. Like nothing boxer gay. shorts. No, not boxers, just regular, regular running shorts. shorts. Yeah, just kind of like that. Ma, you're hanging. We're going to need a nut lift. <laughs> now, are you completely shaved, or do you have hairy legs? Or No, I get to, I don't shave my legs. I got All regular. Right, so you wait, wait, regular. Wait Didn't you do a commercial once, a TV commercial for, like, a hair, you know, to take hair uh, off your Yeah, I, I did an infomercial for, uh, for uh, what is it, what do they call that? It's a, it's a lotion you put on, and it <laughs> takes your, your chest hair off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Isn't where you broke out and but, you freaked out? No, my, my career has taken off. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, it was an infomercial. So and how good, long did you good money? How long did you spend at this dude's apartment? Uh, it's probably about an hour and a half. Was it creepy when you walk? An hour and a an half. Hour and a half. How does that go? So down? I got to talk to the guy first, and he wants to. He wants what to say talk. He, he's like, all right, what kind of stuff have you done? You know, what are you looking to do? Can he just look at you and know if they want to use you for the magazine? That's pretty much, that's pretty much what it, I was there for. 
But an hour pictures. and a half? Well, yeah, the guy's well, got to well, finish. And then he took pictures? <laughs> yeah, they take pictures. <laughs> he wow. takes pictures. Wow. Yeah. All right, here's what we're going to do. So, but this was for a specific job. Yeah. Well, so he, why do you need the, to he, talk to you? He's the photographer for this magazine. And right. if they like you, if you photograph the way he wants you to, he says, all right, I want to use this guy. Right. So that's how it goes. So he took right. some pictures, and then he's going to say, you know. All right. He said he had something coming up, but I was too big for it. So mm, You're too big. Because most, most of these guys big. are like, you know, most of these guys are really small. Casey's a polo. <laughs> Casey's a polo. Wow. Yeah. So, something like that, yeah. <laughs> you tell me an hour and a half in this guy's bedroom? Yeah, well, the guy's got to reload film, and he got to do lights and crap like that. But, um, but he's, not supposed to, he's supposed to audition to see if he wants to use you in the shoot. No, but this, it was like, I was got these photos, too. Can I just the, say man, the manager knows this guy. Can I just say something? If it, for an hour and a half, that's work. Yeah, he should pay you. No, 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 I'm getting I'm getting pictures out of it, too. I'm going to get oh, them when he's right, done. All right. Because my manager knows this guy, and he's, you know, he's on the up. That's what he said. <laughs> he's on the up. <laughs> And so are you boys. Even if you don't use it, I get to keep the pictures. So, what the, so you had a pose and stuff? I got to see these pictures. And what did you do? Like, you're in your shorts and you get your shirt off? Yeah. And what do you have to do? Like, do you have to well, like, bend tell you, over? They, they and... tell you, all right, you know, uh, you know, put your, put your it's hips. It's not they, it's the guy. Put the guy. They say, all right, put your hips this way. Uh, all right, step this way. Does he tell you, you look standing beautiful? standing or lying no, down? No, they they you go, oh, up. perfect, perfect. Good, good. Make love to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's, it's, it's so, you got to smile and it's like, you know. Do you so, gay. so gay. It's gay. It's ridiculously gonna, gay. I want you to make love to the camera, and my name is Camera. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like the movies where the young girls go to Hollywood. And you get them naked. Yeah. You know they blew those pictures up and they were on display at a oh, gay yeah. rave last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, see? Good audition. <laughs> wow. Do you have to flex? Uh, yeah, well, sometimes, you you know, <laughs> you want to see your abs or something like that, so, you you know, you're supposed to flex them. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Oh, you sit right here, and we're going to do a lovely close-up of that Deja Lee beautiful face. I get a little nervous at first with cold readings, but then I'm all right. Well, don't worry about that, because we're going to get to the dialogue later, okay? So, you like art movies, huh, Coco? Oh, Antonio, you those people? Sure. I mean, it beats watching Laverne and Shirley, right? Oh, Coco, you don't know what you're doing to my lens. Oh, jeez, you know. <laughs> you have a natural rapport with the camera, you know that? It's unbelievable. I mean, you know, some performers can make love to the camera. I mean, Garbo did. Monroe did. So could you. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Could you take your top off, please? <laughs> what? Could you take your blouse off? Uh, are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. What's the matter? You're acting like some dumb school kid all of a sudden. I thought you were a professional. I am. <laughs> well, then what's the problem? Yeah, Coco. <laughs> Is this how it was for Casey? Coco, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you cry the first time you had it? Nobody said nothing about taking your shirt off. <laughs> That's it. Suck your thumb. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Could, uh, could you arch your back? Arch your back a little, Coco. It's Treja Lee, Coco. It's Treja Lee. Oh, smile for me, Coco. Come on, Coco. Smile. Come smile. on, Coco. <laughs> Smile. Praise yeah. Ali, Casey. Smile, Casey. Now take your thumb and put it in your mouth like a little schoolgirl. Yeah. Bad girl. That's fame. fame. Is that chick hot? Coco, Irene Cara. I uh, am. Yeah. Fame. She's the chick who sings the song Fame. She was okay, but when she took her shirt off, it was kind of a bummer because she was like kind of skinny and her boobs were... Kind of like little raisins, like, like little Bobby. raisins. Yeah, like she's, little raisins. She's got a real pretty face. She's yeah. not, you know. Yeah, she didn't have a hot body, but Black that's what was even more disturbing because we stood over shirt like a five year old. Well, that's not... exactly what he was going for. Yeah, put your shirt back. Put your shirt back on, Coco. <laughs> she doesn't have uh, the whole package like you, Casey. Casey, when you take your shirt off, no one's, no one's upset. It's Treja Lee. Treja Lee. Treja Lee. Keiko. Come on, Casey. Come on, Casey. Tell me how Funny Side is even money. <laughs> this is why he has to go gamble. Thank God.
Buff up and be a man. I got Isn't you. my back arching enough? <laughs> no, Casey, arch your back more. Oh, yeah, all right. My abs <laughs> appealing. And we want your abs to come through. That's why Casey, to me, is like a fascinating guy. He's the, uh, he's the only guy at Belmont on a Friday afternoon who's been on an audition like that. Right, mm. yeah. No you know what? you got to go do something real manly if you've done something real gay like that. Yeah. Now you got to have a man's gay. drink and bet. <laughs> so the dude, so I don't understand. How long does it, when you walk in, how long does the dude talk to you? For. I was just for comments. Like I couldn't, to be honest, I couldn't understand what the guy was saying. He's like German. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so he's, you know, oh, he's okay. I, I kept saying like what, you know, and then what he was saying. So that that took a little while. <laughs> Let me look at you, young cashier. You are the Führer's wet dream. Now tell me, what have you done? <laughs> the Führer wants a whole race of people like you. I see a lot of those gay Germans running around. What? Hey, hey, Casey, are you in a movie as a, where you play a bisexual? No, not at all. <laughs> what? Because, uh, uh, you know, we look at the breakdown. I mean, you know, there's a movie that you're in with with him with Margot Kidder. <laughs> are you in a movie with you know, Margot Kidder? I don't think so. I don't. <laughs> he doesn't. And this his name as one of the gay, you know actors really? in, in in the film. And I'm, I'm telling you, we just looked at. And what does he play? Well, according to Storm on the Superman, phone, yeah, he plays a bisexual. <laughs> what? No, I don't. <laughs> Wait a second. We get to the bottom. I would know. Stormin. Yeah. What are you saying? Well, I got the uh, the breakdowns and everything. I sent away uh, my headshot resume for this film, and it came back that there's a Margot Kidder film being shot in Columbus, and it says Casey Armstrong is in it too. And I look closer at the breakdown, and he's playing a bisexual guy. No, are I don't you know. up for a no, no, that's, that's true. I am doing something true? in Columbus, yeah, but I, I, but it's not a bisexual. I'm a, I'm a detective. He no, you're a bisexual dude, detective. You got, you're to, I got you're the homo. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Sherlock Holmes. I sure. I get. Stormin, Stormin, Stormin. Start over again because these guys are making jokes and you're not listening to them and everyone's talking at once. It's a horror movie. Yeah, it will be for you. It's, it's, it's supposed. Wait a second, Stormin. What are you reading in the breakdown? He got cast. As a bisexual guy, right. talks about him having a handlebar mustache and how he performs fellatio, and each side of the handlebar mustache, mustache tickles each testicle and stuff. No, definitely. Wow. I read the script that has nothing like that. No. <laughs> Dude, you better look closer, man. No, I, re I read the script. I wouldn't be a gay detective. That. I'm a gay detective. No, I'm not. How do you I know, know there haven't been rewrites? Well, if that's the case, then I, you know, then it's, that's a different, it's a different story. I got to, you know. Oh, this is great. Maybe they look no, at I, you and said, you know what, our detective is bisexual. Stormy, you're not kidding. German too. Our Rausch Flughaus and me come and be. Stormy, you're not uh, kidding, are you? No, I sent down for it, and actually I got emailed back to uh, possibly come down and audition, too. Not as a bisexual, though. I mean, for the uh, biker part. Okay. So I'm not doing a bisexual. Right. You know what? It, it, when he was saying that, the only thing that I did do that was kind of gay was <laughs> in, uh, in college. college. Yeah. In college, uh, my final project was, you know, Lou Reed is, is the, people always joke about him being gay. Right. 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 So he's got this one <laughs> song you. called Egg Cream. Right. right. So what my what my genius idea was was to do a uh, a parody of it called Head Cream, okay. right? Which entailed mainly of of Lou Reed me uh, walking around campus uh, giving oral to different people around campus. No, no, no but it's it's it's, it's a comedy. It's, it's a funny. It's, dude, it's, the, it's the funniest thing ever, dude. Comedy. Dude, come so, out of the closet. No, no, so, listen, so listen, so listen, so there's like, uh, you know, there'd be a guy. You did a film where you're giving oral to guys. It's a, it's it's a rock video. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you see, all you see is like, oh, dude, no, 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 no dude. Check it out. it's funny. It's the funniest dude, thing you've you ever seen. You came up with that. It's hilarious because it's like it's an inappropriate time. It's like there's a guy, there's a guy, like a guy practicing with a band outside. He's practicing with xylophones. And obviously, you see Lou Reed's head go down. You know, like, yeah, put that on that too. Yeah, we, yeah. That's, he plays a detective. And also, yeah. also, also and, and around the, the same time, the same class, I did a, a, a Dude, film called. You, listen, listen, to this one. I did a, a film called uh, to that a video, Penis Colada. That's funny. Instead of uh, Pina Colada, Pina Colada, you know that song. Penis if you like penis, but did, but right? But it did with Buckethead and spandex, you know. So it's yeah. funny. All right, good. Funny fat guy. Gay is funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. So whenever he casts himself, he casts himself gay. Yeah, it's gay, funny how you think. Gay is funny. Art. Like when you come up with your ideas. Yeah, it's gay stuff where you could yeah. be doing, but funny gay stuff to goof on it. Dude, all we did was gay stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. And Howard, what do you Howard. think that is? Dude. He, he didn't go to the scores to be in a guy's apartment in a juice <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> on paper, that no, looks I, bad. I, I, I'll give you another example. Have you ever been in a G-string? No. Hell no. I, I'll give you another example. Hell me and no. me and Buckethead, who was Buckethead's like a 300-pound lineman, right? Right. We used, to go, we used to go to fraternity parties holding hands. If somebody would say something, and you know, like point out, like, say, so we would fight them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just like, it's, it's fun. Right. Like, you got a great like ass. Yeah, it's something like the Joe Rogan CD. But yeah, thing, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We would beat them up. No, we would beat them up. If they say, hey, there was fags over they would beat them up. Ah, there you go. Beat them up. More contact with men. It's reverse gay bashing. Dude, no, it's look at me. What? Sit down, go to a psychiatrist, and really talk about what you want. I mean, be as, honest as with the guy. As far as what? Sensuality, what you need from a man. There's nothing attractive about men to me. Sorry. Uh, sure. Sorry, bro. But but everything you write is about fantasy. oral. My fantasy. I don't. I don't, when college I did films. You, you, you never saw me doing I'm oral. Not. They no, were I'm about getting girls. I'm comfortable. I can do it. About getting girls. No, it's funny as hell. You got to see head cream. It's the funniest video you've I'm ever seen in your life. I'm Howard. Calm down. Every Mr. film Ed. I ever made in college was, was girls. Yeah. So I met my wife. Was either trying to cast girls so you could yeah. get them or about yeah. girls. That's what you think about right. when you're heterosexual. Right. I can't wait to see the detective one. The trailer's going to right. Casey Armstrong is a dick who likes bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the wall. No Most guys in film class in college find excuses to write in scenes with chicks. Just yeah, they're writing me. girl scenes. What I, I, what I two think, girls no, in every scene what, with me. What I think is funny, I think gay stuff is funny. And, you know, hey, all right, fine. It's I spent, funny. I spent a lot of time with guys, you know, on the football team and stuff like that. And but a lot of gay humor goes on. Okay. You know? hey. All right, dude, I'm just telling you. You didn't go to scores yesterday. You're in a guy's apartment for an hour and a half. Because I need money. And you're short. You, you don't need yeah. money that bad. If you oh, need money, you wouldn't gamble. You go to, for if, money. If you didn't need money, why do you gamble and lose money? You need money? And if you, if you, if you need money, I've why cut, gamble? I've, no, I've cut down on my gambling. But, and Carol, Big time. Guess, you need money. Yeah, hell yeah. I can't. I, at this point. But why do you gamble if you need money? Because I need money. That's why lose, I gamble. And you lose. Sometimes, but sometimes yeah. I win. All right. But wait, wait how, that's how, why I do. Okay. Well, how is giving a guy oral in a movie funny? It's it's. I'm not giving him oral. It's it's. it's You're pretending that. to go, go go. All you see is you see this guy with a huge wig, and you just see the camera pan down. It's just funny as hell, man. Like the guy, you know, all these guys are doing like and a guy selling holding bangles. hands with a man and walking into a party is fun. Yeah, it's funny and because then beating up guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, even that part of it is a hair gay. That's right. Like acting gay to beat people up. Yeah. You know. Look, I, I, all right, I, I did stupid things, but I wouldn't do that now. But you know, hey, that's you know, it's. I get, I get it. We're out in the office. I don't know. Like I know you said that whole thing yesterday. It was legitimate. I don't know how you know it's legitimate, but mm. we're all saying we'd have been gone in two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, 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 no, it's what you got. It's what you got to do. It's a photographer. It's a Friend of the manager. It, what, it, it, if it was not a stranger, for an hour and a half. Was it his studio? Well, oral takes twenty minutes. <laughs> was it his studio or was it his? No, apartment? it's his studio. All these guys have studios inside their apartment. That's where they work guys, from. How do you know? Because <laughs> he's been to every one of them. Yeah, so it's that's way. It's way. Don't you right. think that these guys are going to use you if like you got it on with them? Mm. Like I ain't, I ain't, but, you just use your hand a, on them. I don't even care about that. I you know, I would kill him if this. I mean, to try and do Casey, something like that. I got a question for you. Fifty grand, yeah. right? For me to shoot a calendar. Of you in briefs that I'm telling you right now, I'm marketing to the gay community. You gonna do well, it? I, do I care who you give it to? So you would do it? I don't give a crap. Uh, let me see something. Did this it's guy yesterday baby. touch you at all no, when he never. positioned you? Never. He never positioned you. To be oh, honest. Well, uh, well, sometimes they they touch you, they touch your shoulder like you know do this. <laughs> like that. Dude, I, dude, I know if I, I'm a guy. I know if somebody's screwing around. Tossle your hair. Do they ever work on you at all? I mean, do they, they put makeup on? Oh, he put he put makeup on you. He, put he did. On. So he's the makeup All artist and the photographer. That. No, they don't. Yes, they do. You're what did he put on you? Lipstick? No, not lipstick. <laughs> yeah, mascara. So what do you mean he made you up? What did he do to you? Well, they put the stuff underneath your eyes. I guess. Okay. So your did he put any body sure. makeup on? No, you? not at all. Tell the truth. No, I don't have any. I don't have any like uh, zits or anything like that. So they don't got to do nothing. Does he expect you? No, he doesn't inspect me. <laughs> you need some rouge. And some lipstick. <laughs> Put yogurt on my back. Uh, Almost heroes. <laughs> Did he rub some yogurt on your back? It will look real. That wasn't lotion they rubbed yeah. on your <laughs> Boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a gay oh. day you had. Oh, tell yeah. me about it. I'm t yeah, it was very gay. But we didn't realize you'd had so many gay days. Yeah, no, it's, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. it's what you we're going to do. Unfortunately, I have to be gay. <laughs> How much can you make, though, in a print? $150. Is that how much you can make? Yeah, but then once you get that, you, then you, you put it on, you got to, you know, when you go that and show just, to people, you got to, you know, you, that take, that you take everything rolling. that you get. I, I can't, you know, <laughs> three years. Ball <laughs> so yeah. for 150 bucks, you can get Casey alone in your room with a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This guy didn't pay a thing. He didn't even get the job. 
He's gonna give him some free photographs. Right. <laughs> you, you know how much you know how much those photographs cost. See, if you do these small little kind of gay projects, then you can get some really big gay projects. <laughs> Dude, you know, how, you know how much you know how much uh, photographs cost? Like rolls of film when they do this. How much? You know how much it costs? It costs almost four or five hundred dollars. Wow. Shut up with a disposable camera. A roll of film is five hundred dollars. No, it's like a fo- like a whole photo shoot. It's, it's like yeah, four hundred dollars. You know, the film is tw- the, the film is twenty dollars, and his time is five hundred. Yeah, because they're they're all very important. Oh uh, yeah. Wait, I've got to go to Seven Eleven and get another camera. <laughs> oh my god! Dude, right now, I got to do everything that I can do because when you're gone in two hey, years, going, and I'm at the Walmart, you do know, it. Just, do it, man. I'm gonna Go think back. It. I had a shot. I got a chance to, to do stuff now. But, I hope you find something question, you're though? looking for. Out there. Right. Because that appearance I told you about was for a lot more money than this photo shoot. But you, but you oh, won't. what to go to go to another country yeah. for a week? No, no. For three days. For three days, you were. So, how much a, money was day, that? It's a day to get. It's a, it's, it's, uh, should I say how much it was? Yeah. Oh, Twenty five hundred bucks. So, and he turned it down. So and for an hour and a half, for and I got a gig that weekend. I can't make it, and and I already got stuff booked up that the whole week. And it's my whole vacation here. I'm not gonna, you know. All right. But then I didn't rule that out entirely either. Dominic, you're on the air. When, when Casey was growing up and his father was that strong coach, <laughs> and he watched the father identify with all the other young boys, that's when Casey determined what was sexy and what wasn't or what was appealing. And Casey's still locked into that world. All right, Chubby Freud is telling me what I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Howard, don't you agree? That everything was actually created back then. Well, he wants to. I think the photographer represents his father in that scenario, and he wants to win him over. And he also wants to please. What his what his father saw as appealing is what is what the, identifies Casey today. Do you know how absurd? Very true. Do you know how absurd you guys sound? You sound. No, Howard, 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 do you have actually? Dominic has a psychology uh, degree. I, it's all crap. Wait, what do you think these lawyers deal with? They garbage. deal with psychology all the time. It's, it's, re- it's retarded. Mm-hmm. They're they're retarded? Thinking is retarded. You're in a guy's room. <laughs> it's a, that's no what the guy does for a living. Man. That's what the guy does. <laughs> what do you shoots do? for the magazines. What are you that's doing what he does. There? <laughs> <laughs> we know what he does. We're trying to figure out what you're doing there. Casey, I'm trying like to gay know? off. Would you let your sister go to someone's apartment to be photographed? No, not in, not, not in a second, no. Oh, why not? Why? Because yeah. he's a woman. Oh. You're going to be alone with a guy? No, you can't do that. It's retarded. Yeah, that would be straight sex. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be too normal. That's wrong. <laughs> uh, what's, 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 what's Hans going to do? What's the guy going to do to me, you know? Right. Well, he's going to do nothing to me. Nothing? <laughs> I didn't say I did nothing. We follow orders. <laughs> I know what he's doing to the picture of you right now. <laughs> Good, let him do it. I don't care. So when do it's you and Hans get back together to look at your pictures? No, I don't know. He's going to talk to Ron, his manager. Sit close on the couch. There's a picture from there. You mind if I shave your pubes in a swastika? <laughs> <laughs> do they ever say you have too much hair and they need to shave you like a little no, bit? No, I'm not a hairy guy. Yeah. I don't get that, bro. Well, can you do the pose for us? Like, just, just yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on, do it. Yeah. Do? Come on. Show us what you did. No, I just, you just stand there. Oh, come on. Show, show, show it for the Fuhrer. What? Show, show me the pose head. you did. Come on. Show me how no, you flex your abs and do that stuff. No, I, no, no. I, I had enough embarrassment yesterday. I got to go through it again. <laughs> you know, he <laughs> will never do it for us. <laughs> No, no. If you're, if, you're honest, if you're a little more supportive, maybe, but you know, you're not. You put up for Hans and not Robin. <laughs> right. Any gay guy with yeah, a, a woman wants to see you. You don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Only Mike, men. you're on the air. Foreign men. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, how you doing, Howard? I'm hey. a long-time listener. Listen, I would quit both of my full-time jobs to go to scores. I wouldn't be, what are you, high delicious over there, Casey? <laughs> hey. Hey. Come on. Dude, I what? I need dough. You are Excellent. here, delicious. I, I work with full-time jobs, man. I won't miss scores. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, exactly. well, you know what? I'm, I'm living uh, paycheck to uh, paycheck, so I got to do what I got to do. All right. Why, man. You didn't Why? make any money yesterday. That's all I well, know. Well, I hope I, I, I did. Uh, uh, that guy only had Thursday open. Yeah, that's the time. Like the guy's been trying to get me in there for a while. And that's the only, I'm not going to tell you. I know I can't do it that day. I can do it a different time where I'm begging him to, to, to get in there. He's working paycheck to penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, good for you, Casey. Good to hear you couldn't be at the scores party. I got to take a break. When we come back, I got to do that, and then um, I'll, I'll surprise you when we get back. Casey, right after come to that chair like you're a little sore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be back right after these words. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> When I'm kicking back, sipping on that yak, I like to jack to the marauder, spray the ladies with that milky treat with an arc that'll reach from across the street. Let's go, baby. 
was born in 1975, baby. Happy Up, baby. We'll tell you about how the free world will conquer communism. Yeah, I like to send a woman to the hair salon <laughs> and let her get bangs in her hair. They come in her hair. She's oh, coming up bangs, coming up bangs. They like you got like sperm and bangs, baby. What the aid of God and the few Marines. God has a hard on for Marines. Oh, you like that, don't you? <laughs> because we kill. Oh, my. I'd like to touch. He plays his game. We play our. Tickle my tits. To show our appreciation for so much power, we keep heaven packed with fresh soul. God was here before the Marine Corps. That's right. So you can give your heart to Jesus. Woo! But your ass belongs to the car. Like you do, do. do you ladies understand? Sir, yes, sir. I can't hear you. Sir, yes, sir. We're on a mission from God. What's that supposed to be? Some kind of sick joke? Yeah, that's a joke, son. Don't you get it? I made a funny, son, and you're not laughing. You're different from other people. Yeah, I'm different from other people. <laughs> favorite stories. <laughs> Whatever happened with those gay photographs? Yeah, where are they showing up besides that guy's apartment? <laughs> <laughs> the guy's got a shrine. Casey, Casey goes to some dude's apartment. <laughs> some German guy. This is my KC shrine. He claims to be trying out for men's health. <laughs> Whatever happened to your gay photographs? I got a... Uh, you in your underpants, right? Uh, yeah. With his pants <laughs> down around his ankles. No, it's, you know. <laughs> so, all right, so I got a... Uh, Talk to another guy, so I got uh, the guy turned into a poster. Oh, uh, you're a poster? Are you, are you getting paid for that? Yeah, nice. Oh, you are? Nice. Where's the poster? It's going to be ready, I think, probably next month. You know who that poster's for? Who? Gay guys. men. I could give a crap less. I got the money in the bank right now. It's nice. You're a gay sex symbol. What do you get Don't paid care. for a poster? I got three grand for it. But you're going to get something for the sales, too, right? Yeah. No, oh, ain't good for you. Nice, right? Will's going around, Will, who works in the back office, saying that I'm in love with KC, and he has evidence, and evidently he, he preaches this to anybody. Really? And I'm like, dude, what is your problem? I'm you see, gay have for... Have you detected this? Have you Did detected you know, that I'm gay for you, Howard's dude? in love with you? Have you detected any signs of me being gay for you? <laughs> dude, I, I, besides Gary here, there's nobody that you yell at more besides me. I know. Maybe that's love. <laughs> no, I will. Gary gets it the worst, and then I get the second worst. Don't talk behind my back. Just tell me. No, I didn't preach it to anybody. I, well, everyone wants. back there said they hear your rap yeah, about how. Yeah, because they think it's funny, and they want to bring it up on the air. That's the only reason. It's not well, like. what is your rap? No, I have proof. What is it, John? He says it to me all the time. Whenever you like say something about Casey, he goes, "See, there, there yeah, you exactly." Go. And he doesn't just say it. He like is 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 adamant about it. No, I noticed it once, and then. It started to snowball from there. Like the more I picked up on it, there's like a lot of things. Dude, you, you honestly think I'm gay for anything? No, man? I don't think. I think that you have a weird attraction to Casey. I don't think you'd ever like act attraction. on it. I don't think you'd ever like bang on. But I think there's weird something attraction. Like strange going on there. Well, what is your proof? I gotta hear this. I like Casey. I think he's a nice guy. There ain't nothing gay about him. All right, like the one main thing I was talking to these guys about yesterday. When we went to Las Vegas, it was three days of shows, porn stars, strippers, everything out there, right? Yeah. Howard starts off the show. His first observation is he saw KC down at the pool with his shirt off. Like that's his first observation. Yeah, but of what, what, you don't why? Like five don't hours you? later. But you're forgetting the story. Well, what was the story? I go down to the pool with my with my woman, mm -hmm. and Artie's woman's there, 
and Melissa Ross's woman's there. We're laying by the pool. I'm, you know, I'm in my bathing suit. Ass wipe comes down. <laughs> Mr. Muscles, pumped up from the gym, comes in, he rips off his shirt, he's laying there in his bathing suit, and all the women start giggling, talking to one another. They're, yeah. and I'm sitting there going, hey, wh no. what's going on? You, 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 we know. that no, you I was completely pool, traumatized. Happened. And then my girlfriend goes, oh, my God, look at KC's body. And, 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 and all three of them are going... This is such a treat. KC's down here. We're looking at him. And I go, get the hell out of here with this guy. Get out of here, KC. Yeah, how can you dispute me when I say women go for looks? Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ. They were all salivating over the dude. Oh, stop it. And I'm sitting you there. too. So, so you of course. Too. He's the guy. You doing it, too. I think KC playing well, craps well, with his shirt off was a little much. <laughs> Will's argument about that. I was traumatized. <laughs> Will says you must have thought about it for five hours before you got on the air. To because it was a funny story. No, but that wasn't the observation. It was I walked by Casey at the pool and I was lucky enough to see him with a shirt off or something like that. It oh, so you like didn't tell the story? Get out of here! I swear, you're insane. Well, well, maybe he's on to something here. What else? All right, got? What else you got? Uh, we're talking about uh, when we played uh, shaved or unshaved. Yeah. Yeah, you started guessing at whether KC was shaved or unshaved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. funny. I didn't even look Well, yesterday. what was the answer? <laughs> yeah, it was a big mystery. And then, even yesterday, you uh, when you're talking to Robin about like who she masturbates on the show, like you couldn't believe that she wouldn't mas like pleasure herself to, to KC. Of course, course I don't. what you're thinking. Because if that makes me gay, I, go, I know that KC, every female guest that comes here wants KC. So how could Robin not? And Robin has told me she thinks KC's hot. I think he's... He's very hot, but I know how disturbed he is, and it bothers me. Yeah, but you were like, you seem bothered like that. that she wouldn't pleasure I seem bothered. And this, this oh. is Not a strong, you bothered. This is no, he said, season. I seem bothered oh. that you didn't pleasure yeah, yourself. No. What do I care? Well, you did. You kept arguing with me about right. it. That's true. Right. And, and the strongest right, truth true. ever is you, in Vegas, you and, I guess, Casey went to the steam room. No, oh. no, no, no. You argued whether he was wearing underpants or not in the steam no. room? here's what happened. You should read the log, and it's, like, disturbing. Wait a second. Can I say something, Can I say something in my defense? Uh, yes. I go in for his steam in the gym. Yeah. Tom Chiasano was in the locker room. Me. And who was in the steam room with me? I forget. It was someone Ralph. else. Ralph. Was it Ralph? I, I think no, it wasn't Ralph. Or it was somebody Benny? else. Was it no. Gary? Gary takes Oh, I know. It was Joe. Joe. Joe the cop. Oh, okay. oh Joe the cop. Yeah, Joe the cop. So me and Joe the cop go in the steam room, and we're sitting there in the steam. Who walks in? Casey. The dude walks in. He's got his underpants and a towel on. No, I, I swear, I, Howard, I swear to God. So I, I go, I, I go, on. Casey. You're in a steam room. I don't I didn't have my underpants? How if I have a towel on? How you do keep you know a towel on. You don't take your underpants. You if I had a towel on, well, how do you know I had underpants? Well, he's looking at him on? awfully hard, isn't he, uh, Will? I, 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 I swear to God, I didn't have my underpants on. So uh, and I, and Joe I, and I are laughing our ass off. In there. Yeah. Uh, oh, did I? To take a steam because I yeah. never did it before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that might be gay. Uh, <laughs> I needed you. I have <laughs> Come yeah. into the steam room with me, Casey. Yeah. I have heard through the office, like, Casey has been, you, you know, Casey's known as the golden boy to you. Like, he could do no wrong. Who says that? I, Will I, said I, that. Have you heard him yell at me Casey, when I, when I he, he yells at Gary, me, and Benji way no, more than he ever yells no at way. you. You're oh, crazy. Oh, that Casey will go on. Me, oh, oh, it's because Will brought this up yesterday, right? We had this discussion off the air and I said this is funny we should have this on the air yeah and I said um, listen I always yell at Casey but did you see since he's been on his medication did you see I mean the guy looked like he was going to kill someone oh yeah and five people came up to me and said listen you got to back off KC uh, yeah, and know. I've backed off ever since oh is that what it is because yeah. Yeah. it has been very nice I mean yeah I'm being even nice the, because even like like Dominic called me. Everyone said, "Listen, this really? guy's gonna snap." <laughs> no, I'm not. So you got to back off and be no, nice to the no, guy. No, so no, I no. got lectured by five or six people that I better have some compassion. That's what happened because when yeah. I was, you know I was in here during a break and and you know Casey showed me some of his medication he was taking and I was gonna make a joke or something. Howard goes, John, this is serious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, there have been a number of times this is, this is where Casey around. has screwed up and Howard said, "It's my yeah. fault, Casey. Don't yeah. worry." About oh yeah. I, I don't want it to be serious. I want it to go back to. Wait, what? Dude, dude, no way. No, no, no. no. no way. That was oh, making no. you sick. We're no, trying to help. No, 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 I no. agree with Howard. Since you've been on your medication, you've been hotter than ever. Dude, <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want it back the way it was. All I know is I pointed out to you that I was not pleased with something you were doing. I forget what it was. And you snapped, dude. But I and every were. time you have uh, even come In fact, the other day. 
You said something, and he started screaming like a maniac. No, I did it. It was I no did joke. One day because I was... Dude, you're crazy. <laughs> no. I did it one day because I was completely right, and you guys wouldn't let me talk. Well, that's the point. Just the other day, you go, look... You know, and as soon as you go look, I'm like under Whoa. the desk. Whoa! No, no, no. Hey, look, dude. There's no doubt in my mind. You could snap my neck in half. No, no. I don't no. need that. No, I, I like you people. It was never. I was never doing anything bad. Thank you, people. Thank you. I'm serious. But you like us now when everything's calm. When no, things get intense, I, I you snap. Thought, I never we thought like of, you. I never thought we of like seriously harming too. anybody here. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. And we wanted to stay there. Well, I, I would. I would. Dude, I would, I'm just. I, I, I like my job. I, Dude, I'm just keeping my distance. Yeah, but you thought of killing your family. Hey, take it easy, John. Yeah, it was just okay. The people you love are the ones you want to kill. Stop, I stop, I'm not stop. Gonna, it's, a, it's a thought. It's not. No. A, it I don't want to. Hey, by the way. Stop it. Enough discussion see, about that's this. That's so weird. I can't believe it. I, see, I, w I would never be afraid of Kate. He's like, okay, he's like, good. Oh, I'm, that's I'm, great, I'm, John. I'm a nice guy. Dude, the guy's got major problems. Yeah, who doesn't in this So room? you think he's beyond, like, even kidding around? Yeah, with? yeah. <laughs> Dude, is that why you've been nice to me so often? Yeah. Really? Well, of course. What do you think? He's telling you that Dude. You, what, your mistakes are his fault? You think he's doing that? When do, do I do that for anyone else? Will's right. I give you special <laughs> consideration. Happened, happened, like, so I'm like, oh, I'm like, I have like some really nice things. Like, because like, you go on, we were talking, uh, you go in, um... In phases, like you, you really into, you like somebody for a while, but then kind of we seem we seem annoyed by dude. For a he's while. gonna consistently like you, dude. I like you. <laughs> I like you. When too. you're running through here with your machete, remember how nice I was <laughs> to you. No, but do, do you guys feel that way that Howard goes through like he likes you a lot a couple weeks? But then, <laughs> oh yeah, but then well, you, that, he's yeah. annoyed by you. A but but you've been. I think he's always been really good to you. No, but no, he, he's, no. He's, he's, no, no, he yells no, at me no. the most because. I, I, you know, I, but see, that's I, weird that he thinks that you yell at him the most, because that's insane. No, not the most. Gary gets it the most. Gary gets it the most, but I, I'm pretty tough on Casey. But ever since he snapped and the family did the intervention on him, and then everyone kind of sat me down and said, listen, you got a problem on your hands with this guy. He's, he's going through a rough time. He can't handle much. And I said, okay. No, but I don't want it to be like that. I, I don't want to. No, no, I know. We're waiting for you to get better. When you get all. better, I'll, he'll, I'll he'll beat you up. let the hammer down. Can yeah. I give you an example of that? <laughs> yeah. One day we were talking about uh, Casey spelled lingerie wrong in a meeting, right? right? So I made a note of it that we, because with everyone, if anybody messes up, we talk about it. The next morning I handed you a note off the air, and just you just waved me off. You're like, no, that's right. No, see that that's the and worst. And you give me that look, that look like you know what he can't. No, that's the worst well, thing. And you agree, thing right? I mean, you were in on some of the discussions, especially I, the two times Casey snapped. I'll tell you that the, um, we have somebody that's interning here who works in the back, and yeah. she saw the show where Casey snapped on the air, and she pulled me to the side. She goes, "Are you guys worried?" Oh, believe me, yeah, everyone here is worried. He wasn't worried with Casey. He couldn't see himself. Yeah. So you see, well, Howard's not gay. He's scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might be coward. It looks the same as love. Yeah. No, no, you can't. You can't. Please don't. Treat We're not treating different. you any different. No, no, I'm, not I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. You won't treated. be treated oh, differently. But then it makes me think like, you know. <laughs> case, case. I won't treat you differently. I promise. No, this is not a bit, We're though. not treating you any differently. It's not a bit. I know it's not a bit. Dude, you do John, it the air. The guy has a problem. You understand? Who doesn't in this room? Right. Why, and right. they're handling all of uh, You really no. think he's capable of snapping? Yes. No. He yes. did already. Okay, you know what this is like? This is like when a guy's got kind of like he's dinged up a little bit on the football field. He's a little bit. And then the coach says, all right, don't hit him. Don't hit him. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. You can't That's do that. That's exactly it. You can't do Although, you know, how he, he did snap on me that time. We were making fun of him about, right. about leaving from 9 11. Dude. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah, dude. There's no question. I've, I've snapped on people before. Dude. Yeah. Dude. Oh, he wanted, wanted to kill the level of his, He wanted to kill John. The level of his snapping. Who hasn't wanted to kill John? When, <laughs> thank you. The level of his snapping and freaking out went up <laughs> after his family had the intervention with him. Uh. And he was in desperate need of help. The only reason I would say that is because he went off on you. Right. But yeah. the day he went off on John, he was pretty scared. Yeah. And, and I didn't know how sick he was then. And I, after Casey went to the psychiatrist and they got him on medication, finally, I didn't want anybody to sabotage the guys getting better. So I told people, lighten up on Casey. No. It's not a question. Please take that off. Take that off. No. Well, you know, Casey. All right, I'll take it off. No, I'll you know, Casey, off. he gets serious because I've been on medication in the past. this is a for the air. And, and Howard's oh, both on it. <laughs> See, you know, one thing this about is Casey is for the, air. the way Casey gets angry is, to me, the, the scariest thing. Because what will happen is I've seen you stand at this podium and someone will be goofing on you and you sort of grit your teeth, you know, and it looks like you're, like, you're just thinking about something and then boom, it's, it's an explosion. Yeah, he's holding it and holding yeah, it. Yeah, it goes, it goes. No, I'm not angry. 
know, there's an internal argument no, going I'm on just, right I'm, now. I'm just saying, like, you know, I don't, I don't kill want to Gary. Don't Dude, kill I just, Gary. I want to see you get better. I'm, I'm, We're all behind you. Know you. I'm on, I'm you know on what team. he determined? He determined that he was being tougher on you than that he needed to be. Look, everyone knows Casey's no, he history. Wasn't. He had a father who was really tough on him. Yeah. Something's going on in that head of his. Who knows? But I don't, like, even Dominic called me and said, listen. He's he's thinking you're the father figure. Oh, no, yeah. I don't. You're, you're, and he's, you're he, instead of hitting his father. Yeah. He's gonna hit you. You know, it's easy to hit, hit anybody. anybody. Well, he can't get to his father. Howard, you know how weird it is. John and I had a 20 minute discussion when we were down in the Bahamas. <laughs> Does Casey have the ability in therapy to recognize? What went wrong in his no. life? Or is he that's why it? he's medicated. Or is he never going to see it? That's what I said. I said he can see everywhere. it. No. I, I, said he'll, I don't think he'll ever be able to realize no. how messed up his childhood was. I said 10 years. It's Wait a minute. Like right? This is so funny because you guys are having that conversation in the Bahamas. I'm having that conversation with Anne Marie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're all having that conversation. I like, I like Casey, talking about I'm, I'm, not having my, I'm not having that conversation. But we care about you. Yeah. No, we yeah. are all yeah. saying we love you. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know, it wasn't, yeah, but we were kidding. You know what? I want to stop this conversation right now. I don't like it, and I'm not comfortable with it. No, I, I am uncomfortable with the fact that me you too. told people not to, to That's be correct. Me. I cared about that's, you. You know what that is? That's alienating. That's taking me no, part no, of no, 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 you noticed. What do you think he's uh, going to find out uh, in therapy now? <laughs> Dominic, you're on the air. Yeah, but isn't Casey doing better? Yes. 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 No, oh, no, yes, he is. You know what? Right, ask me how many times I was late for work before I started this crap. Well, that's not In four years. In four years. Once. In four years. Now, it, it happened like three or four times. Well, it's okay, stuff. though. Yeah, but that's until you get adjusted to the medication, but you're a lot calmer. You haven't killed anyone the whole week. I we think, understand you're being late. I don't think you don't that's mind. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind if you're late. Yeah, you're not afraid of being yeah. late now because you're banging the boss. <laughs> that's right. You need to rest you after you're banging the boss. You can be late now. <laughs> I mean, of course you can be late now. Come Casey, on. Look, if you want to come in 11 o'clock, it's not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do what you want, man. It, it was funny, huh, because he showed up late the other, like, a few times now, and I nobody know, says no, anything well, to Well, you know, the other day, his it, Howard's breakfast was late, yeah. which means Casey's out here, <laughs> and Howard didn't say a word. You, no, I yelled at Gary. You yelled at Gary. 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 didn't say a thing to I Casey. I said, Gary, I go, look, <laughs> take, uh, take Casey off to breakfast detail, please. And he goes... If we do that, it could send them over the edge. That's and I right. said, you know what? You're right. Just leave them on and I'll That's just wait. Right. But even Gary didn't say anything when he showed up. <laughs> Casey gets I the worst not. I, he, he said, I'm sorry, dude. I got to write. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, but that makes me more like as soon as I got up, because uh, I, I, got, I got a call at 6 in the morning. I got up and I, I started screaming and I, I trashed my apartment because I was all pissed off. Better that you do it there. And I slept through it. That's yeah. okay. Better you do it there. I broke tables. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll uh, tell you, one of the funniest things I see every my morning is this. Jason making that phone. Right. I'm like, oh God, it's yeah, time me, to me, wake up. Me and Jason, so what is it? I call him when I when I go to the deli, and since, he calls me. And since the medication, you uh, but, been sleeping late. The medication hello, shouldn't hello. make you sleep. Out. It actually supposed to keep you awake. No, what it does is it it, it I, I sleep. I have four alarms. I just bought two more. Now he I gets zonked. Well, and I can sleep through it. I think the medication makes you buy alarms. <laughs> hey, I, don't, I, I don't want to get into a too weird an area. But did you did you lose money on the Yankee game last week? No way, dude. I quit gambling. Oh, you're kidding! Because one of the guys, I heard that, but one well, that's of the guys, good. One Why of the guys in the kinda? office said that you, um, that you were complaining that you, you lost some money on one of the games. No, I hate the Yankees. I just, I just say that I hate the Yankees. No, I, I'm, uh, my gambling's under control. Wow, I, this yeah. is working but, then. But well, that's just one, one of the things that's out of control in my life, so I got rid of that. And, but you always complain you don't have money, though. Yeah, because uh, he doesn't make a lot of money. Make a lot. And, yeah, but he works every weekend. He's got. Yeah, but do, what kind of gigs do I take? I take anything. But you probably he's, still he's in posing debt for gay porn. Yeah, he's posing for gay porno he's talent. He's a gay poster boy. <laughs> you'll see it, man. You'll love it. Oh, we're gonna oh, put it up in here. I know I will. Because <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> well, he can't wait to. Will you sign it for him? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. My K, my crazy Casey Muscle Man. Uh, Is our meeting in the jacuzzi still on for today? <laughs> hey, yeah, Casey. I mean, how was that steam you two took together? Yeah. <laughs> this is Rod Stiff. Take, take off your take off your underpants, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Free your balls. You gotta wear your underpants in here. Young KC. <laughs> I, I came back to my law office and there was a phone call from two judges, from two new clients in KC. I called him back in one second. <laughs> <laughs> I love Get him on the phone. What did KC want? 
Uh, that doesn't, doesn't matter. But I said, get him right on the phone. He's very important. Yes. Return Casey's call. I know, because Casey asks me every day, you think I should be on this medication? And I went, yes. <laughs> Just stick with it. I know. There was one day that everybody was getting upset because of something going on with him. And he was like, you see, I'm not taking it anymore. I said, no, 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 no. no you take stop it. telling him bad things about what's happening to him now. He has to stay on that medication. Yeah, and I don't care if you're late from the medication. <laughs> we don't care. if, As yeah. long as the medication is helping you, Casey, we're with you. It's got to be. You're not gambling anymore. Well, that's that's you know that's, I just get sick sick of uh, well. There's a oh, reason. you couldn't do that before. You wouldn't have ever gotten sick you're of it gonna, before. You're not going to gamble on the Breeders Cup. Oh yeah, of course yeah. I am. What? Yeah. Gee, you yeah. are? Yeah, I'm going to this weekend. I'm going to the Breeders Cup. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> I thought you weren't. It's, it's horse racing. I thought you had it under control. Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't mean I can't go out and, and screw around a little bit. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, no, no, I got. That. I have an appearance. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to L.A. to the Breeders' Club. That's fine. Right. That's so, fine. So that's the thing. Just go. Be there. Let me ask you a question. If you were an alcoholic, right? Yeah. So, uh, say Casey's an alcoholic. I, I know. I would you I, take I, a drink? All right, fine. Hey, dude, I went to GA. I know. <laughs> Where'd you go? GA, I went to GA. Gamblers Anonymous. How many times did you go? Uh, pretty much every week. Really? So, when did you and do did that? you tell them you're going to gamble on the Breeders' Cup? No, so you can't do that. You, you have to stop. You have to stop. So, totally. so tell them. Have the balls to go to your meeting and tell them you're going to gamble on the Breeders' Cup. Is he going to meetings now? Is that what you're saying? You still go to Gambles and Adams? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I didn't know that. (laughs) And you're going to gamble? You nutcase. Yeah. Uh, but no, but see, I, I, you know, it, uh, they say they say that you can't do it, and there's no way that you can do it. But, right. But so, look, but it's, you it's, know it's that like, you can. It's not. It's not money that I don't have. Did uh, they ever do, wait, did uh, it on you that they might know something you don't know? Yeah, I know they know a lot, but try, I, have, I have, I have great. Uh, have knowledge. you told them I'm that you're thinking them. about going and gambling at the no. Breeders' Cup in the meetings? No. Why haven't you brought it up since it's no big deal? Because I, it's not all about me. I just sit. I wait, listen to people. Wait a so. second, uh, Casey. You have I, a I, listen, I listen to people. That's why I go. I go to listen to people. You've never shared. Story. You have a gamble to, on one football game a season. Of course I have. Yeah. I didn't oh say my I, god. But you're supposed to stop. But it's in. It's. It, trust me. Just, just trust me. It's in check. All right. I'm serious. Uh, so how much are you gonna put in the Breeders' Cup? I, I, I'm just gonna screw around. I'm gonna be there with my friends and and I'm gonna hang out. It's, Let it's, me it's ask you something. It's a couple of dollars a race. It's Have like you sports. ever stood up in the meeting and said, "Hi, I'm Casey. I'm a gambler. I'm gay. I'm a I'm gay, gay gambler. I'm a gay gambler. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Casey, and this is my German photographer. <laughs> Hi, Casey. <laughs> I gamble because I'm in my underpants on a calendar. <laughs> you told your story, right? I am Casey. Yeah. Yeah. That's. You know, oh, I'd love a tape of that. Oh. Yeah. Let me hear your story. <laughs> my father used to throw the dodgeball at me. <laughs> There's nothing to do. It has to do with with. Uh, no, I'd like to hear those crazy gambling stories no it's, it's you know what i suggest that anybody go to any of these meetings just to hear what everybody else has to say and how bad it can get so but you, you don't was, stand up and share on a regular basis <laughs> not, not you don't not if you don't want to but are i was going to say you, maybe are you, you have the same as they are what are you the same as they are are you the, no you I, the same I, my problems or are my, you different my problems are minute and that's how that's a big issue because casey told me there were two stories that he heard there that really set him back he's like whoa wow but since Casey's stories aren't nearly as bad as those, I don't think he thinks he's got as big a problem. Yeah, but you know what? Your story isn't as bad as those. You never got to get what those people had. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, but <laughs> you should maybe go to the G A Y meeting. <laughs> and stand up and say, "Hi, I'm Casey. Yeah. I'm gay." Hi, I'm Case. I'm gay. Casey, I have a problem. <laughs> that meeting's down the hall, pal. Hi, Casey. <laughs> Casey, I don't think Howard twenty. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> that guy who keeps making the gay tapes about KC. Yes. That guy who's obsessed. You know, hey, KC, that guy. He made a couple of new KC songs. <laughs> this is called Give KC the Beef. Then KC started to moan. He said, Give me a rusty trombone. Give KC the Beef Boys and Grease his <laughs> Cover him in bandages from head to toe. Casey the man beef and free his beep. Uh, here's another one that I think is unbelievable. This is called um, Casey's Sausage Party. It's Casey's Sausage Party. He'll kiss a guy if he wants to. Kiss a guy if he wants to. Kiss a guy if he wants to. You kiss a guy too if you love the man goo. Please tell me where my Casey has gone.
great song, isn't it? That's too funny. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> the radio personality suffered from an obsession for years, but now Howard is confessing his secrets. All right, in just a couple of seconds, Stump the Bowie, Evil Dave Letterman, is joining us today. Bowie! Everybody's happy to see him. How are you, Evil morning, Dave? Howard, Good morning. Can I, can I just ask you something? Sure. Does, does anybody uh, have uh, Ashton uh, Kutcher's uh, home phone number? Boy, would I like to cake his uh, eyebrows with my DNA. Wow. I didn't know you were feeling that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good seeing you. Haven't seen you in a while. Oh, yeah. A lot of the fans are happy. Hey, I, I, you know, I heard that uh, the president has uh, put the government on uh, on uh, big alert. There's a, there's a big bomb scare. Uh, the new J-Lo uh, Ben Affleck movie is coming out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. In fact, the review, there's been some advanced reviews. David Letterman is correct. There's some advanced reviews, and they say this movie might be a bigger bomb than Mariah Carey's Glitter. Wow, that's hard to beat. Yeah, they say it's horrible. The whole concept is horrible. J-Lo's a lesbian, but the posters promote that it, this is a love, love story. story. Yep. People are going to be very angry when they show up and there's no love story. They also are yeah. trimming her butt in the posters. Have you noticed that? Yes, I have. I notice everything. I applaud that. Well, Dave, it's good to see you. Yeah. You know, you know, I just want to say one thing here. You know, since uh, 9-1-1, I haven't been able to think about uh, nude young boys as much as I used to. <laughs> That's an after effect of uh, the tragedy? Yeah. Right. I don't know. Well, there's a lot to talk about, certainly. Uh, a couple of things. Our own, that's a good thing. Yeah, our own Benji gave me a gift. I had the weirdest experience with Benji. He came up to me and said, I want to give you a gift. You always are generous with me. And I was trying to think of a time when I was generous with him. but What did he give you? He, so he handed me a box. I said, I'm not opening it. I said, what are you up to? I didn't trust him. I thought I was being punked. Right. <laughs> which is a cool way of saying candid camera. And... Uh, he, I, I made him unwrap his own gift to me. <laughs> and it was real. It was real. It was a book. A book. I, I don't know why anyone would buy this from me. It's a big, thick book. What is it called? What it is, is it's, it was an actual sort of like a guidebook or encyclopedia to New York that came out in 1892. And they just republished it. I'm looking at this thing. I go, oh. He goes, I thought you would enjoy something like this. It's an old guidebook to New York City. Why would I want that? I, I think it's fascinating. and I, yeah, I, I'll never I had, read it. I, I said to, to him, I'll never read it. Give it to someone else. I had to take a guess, and I thought maybe you'd be interested in it, too. No. No, not at all. It's a horrible gift. Have you flipped through it at all? No, not at all. I have no interest in it. All it's right. sitting on my desk, and now I might I'm, want to give it to someone else. He doesn't want to crack it. Yeah, now I'm torn because it's like it's sitting on my desk. I feel bad. Someone gave it to me, but it's like I'm never going to read this. So I want to just throw it out in the garbage. <laughs> well, you know, what that cost you? Uh, I think it's like twenty bucks. Oh, what a waste of money! It's well, sitting next to my Neil Young picture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my God, give it to Tom Chiasano. Give it to Fred. He loves it. I, I got it. I already had bought another copy for Fred. Yeah. But I was going to wait a while to give it to him. <laughs> give him mine. Well, okay, I'll just have to change the inscription. It's such a waste of oh, money. Is there an inscription? Did you read the? I didn't even open it to read it. I have no interest in it. Oh, come on, read the inscription. Right. I bet if you flip through it, you'll be fascinated by it. Other show news, KC Armstrong. KC, gay KC. Yeah. You know, gay KC's, KC's, KC's a homo. Yes. Um, KC, I found out that he, he's on Prozac, so I said to him... When did this happen? When did it happen? And I thought he stopped going to a psychiatrist. <laughs> Doesn't a psychiatrist have to put you on Prozac? Yeah, they do. And did a psychiatrist do this? No, I don't go to a shrink no more. So how did you get Prozac? The doctor did put it on me. What doctor? Put it on you? A regular doctor. To be honest. The what regular you, doctor. A regular doctor. And what, what, all of a sudden, what happened? You went to the doctor <laughs> complaining about what? No, I didn't complain about nothing. But my, my, my brother uh, made me do it. He... Uh, you know, he said, hey, listen, this is what you're going to do. You, you know, uh, but Why? But what was your I complaint? Guess, but, so my girlfriend and my friends came to him, and, and we're just, it was kind of like a, it was like a... Uh, An what, intervention. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And he they goes, all hey, sit down with you? No, just came. He goes, look, you're going to listen to me. And I said, no, I, you know, I was like, F you, get out of here. Is your brother younger or older? No, he's older. Older. And then he, but do you hear what happened? All of his friends and the people who were no. around him went to his brother and intervened, and so his brother had to go take him. Yes. What am I missing? What did they say to your brother to get him to have an intervention? What did just say, you know, uh, you know, just like, I'm, you know, I'm a weirdo. I just, no, but I mean, come on. You must have been doing something you I don't know about. the lowdown on what you've been No, just, to. you know, they, they they never saw me see me anymore. I'm just, you know, I'm, I guess I'm kind of a dark person or whatever. And but No, you, come on. What did they specifically say? What, specifics? Yeah. Um, 
it, it, you know, it, it's it's not right. He's you know he's he's always pissed off. He's you know he's he's angry. And, and is that true? Well, yeah, but you know that's the, but that's the way I've always been. You know what I mean? And, no. he, and so he goes, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna sit down. You're gonna listen to me." I'm like, "No, f you. I'm not gonna listen to anything." So and he, he beat the crap out of me pretty much. This was a, this physically, was, yeah, no. yeah, because I, you know, I was like, "I'm not gonna listen to f you," but he's a lot bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, "You know, this is." This he works out in the gym too, and. The yeah. sports. Yeah, yeah, but he's a lot bigger. So he said, you know, this is this is what you need to do, and, and you're going to listen to me. So, so I, you went to a regular doctor. I went to the, I'm not going to a shrink. I've been to, like... And when you went to the regular doctor, you had to give you a battery a test or something? Yeah, he gave me a test. What was the what test? test? Uh, one of them was uh, this written this written test with, like, answers and stuff. And what did they ask you? Uh, it just said, you know, it's like weird questions. Like, um, uh, do you have, you know, eating... Um, is your appetite better or worse? And do you uh, don't find enjoyment in things? Things and do you find like, enjoyment in things? What, how did you answer that? No. Like, you don't find enjoyment in well, not, not a lot of things, but there are some things I do. Yeah. You like sex. And gambling. Yeah. You gambling. like gambling. Yeah. You, like, you like coming Drinking. to work. Do you like coming to work? I yeah, I like, I like work. Drinking right. and stuff. So then, that, so he takes a test back. This is really funny. He takes a test back. But what do they? I mean, how does this test determine you need to be on Prozac? You, well, you, don't, you, you do enjoy some things. You're angry some of the time. <clears throat> you don't know what the uh, questions he answered wrong were. Right. Yeah. So he, he takes the thing back and he, he comes back in in the room. He goes, uh, you know, I, I I went through the test and I scored it. And he goes, apparently this is a severe case. Oh really? Yeah. So so then he goes. What you know, kind of doctor is he? As a general, uh, I guess I don't know. Like regular, a, regular doctor. Regular doctor. So he says, "This is, um, this, these are the options. This is what you should do." What this is a options? severe case. Yeah. Um, I think I've never heard of a, a, a regular doctor putting someone on Prozac. Well, obviously, you know, many people just go to their regular physician yeah. and they say, you know, I'm not feeling real well. You, there are a lot of people who are on these drugs who are not going to a psychiatrist. So you wrote down the answers, and then was there another test, a physical test of any kind? No, no, nothing like that. Then uh, he spoke to you. Maybe a Rorschach yeah, test. Yeah. Then, then he said, it's, you know, I, it, my first question was, that's not going to screw with anything, you know, like sexually. Yeah, yeah. No. That's you know, but then uh, you know. He said um, it only happens to some people, whatever. But how long have you been on Prozac? Uh, I think it's like two months. Wow! Oh, wow. And it, it doesn't work. <laughs> Why? It's because it, after the first month, it goes come back, and we'll, we'll see what happens. So then they double the dose, and it's it's it. I can t I can't tell you there's any difference that it makes you feel any different. The stuff is sucks. Really? But yeah. let me ask you something. When <laughs> when he said there were options, what were the options? Yeah. They named a bunch of. Uh, he said you should also do therapy, uh, you know, was uh, was psychotherapy or psychiatrist or whatever. Why don't you do it? No, I, I, I've done that. It's stupid. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because you have defenses. You know, because I, I, you know, you got to go, 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 go in there and work. You're you, afraid. Not true at all. I've I've, I've been to like uh, like four. Of them. How many times a week did you go? Once. Yeah, once uh, a week. Who can afford going every long? day? Who can do that? You they, know have, I mean? they have they uh, have programs that the, that you don't have to pay. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't think you can go to like a you can a go clinic. to a clinic where they charge like ten bucks. You're a sick puppy. You need <laughs> lots of help. Because you know, it's, it's, it's told them that there was, you know, just like thoughts I wasn't comfortable with and stuff like that, and and like what kind of thoughts? Uh, you know, you don't. You know his thoughts. Like killing and stuff, drowning things. Yeah. Fag kill. Well, all right, all right. Like the most most important thing to me is my family. Right, right. That's the most important thing. Right, your mother and your brother. Yeah, right. and, and, and everything. And I was just getting these stuff. I know they're not real. I know. I know. Not, I know. You know. You want to kill them? Well, I it, I didn't never wanted to see them go through anything. Oh, you're wacky. Uh, you know what I mean? I would never want them to go through anything bad. So I had these just these weird thoughts that that. You know, I know that they're they're not they're not it's not reality. It's it's it's. What are the weird thoughts? <clears throat> like to to guard them from that. To, to guard them from bad things happening. Yeah, but by doing by killing them. Well, yeah. Thank if you. they die, then exactly. nothing bad could happen to them. Exactly. That's smart. Well, wow. You better you better. Uh, <laughs> but I know it's not real. That's I know. Weird. I hear you. But you have you don't like those thoughts. Right. Well, what's wrong with having those thoughts? You know what? The thought of wanting to kill your mother is as edible as it gets. It's not doesn't mean you're really going to kill her, but don't be afraid to fantasize. Uh, excuse me? Yeah. What? There's nothing wrong with him having thoughts <laughs> as long as he's not acting there, on them. There are reasons you have certain thoughts. Yeah, as they, bad as my parents was, I, where I never thought of killing. I'm right, trying to have a thought. I'm trying to get some more out of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have a thought. Has anyone besides me ever thought about uh, violating uh, Jennifer Aniston's uh, fart box with an ass handle? Yes. Let me ask Casey one quick question. Now act on those. Go ahead, Dave. Let me ask Casey one quick question. Now, Casey, you know, be honest with me on this. Now, have you ever? Uh, do you like uh, looking at drunk guys sleeping in the park? 
Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, Dave, this is a serious thing. You need <laughs> yeah, back you're off making for a minute. light. David Letterman always uh, with the joke. His right. problem, yeah. Dave. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, what's your name? Gary. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got the test. <laughs> I got the test to give you. It's 20 questions. So. How do you have the test? Because you can get it. On, it's a Prozac. You go to the website, you can get it. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> All right, I won't ask all the questions, but this is You have thoughts out. about, like, if you killed your mother and your brother, they would never have bad things exactly. happen to them? Exactly, exactly. Right. Okay. Except that you killed them. No, but see, the thing, but I would, you know, I, of course, in the thing that I would go to, you know what I mean? So, like, oh, you would kill oh, so them you and yourself. Yeah, oh, you yeah. Did. But what do you think could happen to them that would be, that they need I, to avoid? I mean, I, I wouldn't want them just to be upset about anything. Right. Forget you know? that. Do you hear me tell those stories every day on the air about guys like. See, I understand. I understand. Who those what, I understand when people kill their families. I understand that. Oh. Do you think you might be gay and you don't <laughs> want knew, your mom to I know? No, I'm that. being serious. What? You think they, like you're afraid I would find that? Come out of the closet. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Go ahead. I love women. All right. Okay. okay. And I have hey, you want to be one? I'm just trying to figure it out. <laughs> and you want to be a woman? There is nothing about a man that turns me on sexually. Okay. Except right. shooting him in the butt. Not even. Yeah, that, that was head. fun. Yeah. Because that's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Do you t do you uh, take steroids at all? Seriously? No. Have you ever? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe that. It maybe screwed him up and he never got over it. Uh, he he. You know, when your dad's a gym coach, and I don't mean to put it all on this. Bad things are going to happen. Look, Casey's got bigger problems than that. You know, maybe he shouldn't have had that dad, but I will almost guarantee you Casey would have problems anyway. I don't know. With the best father in the world, because Casey's brain does He's not mentally work Ill? right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to ask some of these questions? All right, give me some questions. But do they have the right answers? Well, or here's the deal. The, 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 the answer is... Not often, sometimes, more often. Yeah, that was that was on. Or all the time. So I'm going to just jump ahead to some of the more interesting right. questions. I have crying spells or feel like it. Never. Or, or feel like it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I never, I never have. Why don't you cry? Because I haven't. I just, I don't. Well, is that happening more often? Why don't you cry? I, I, I don't know. I don't have that. It just never did. It wouldn't be manly. But do you have it more often now, these feelings like you want to cry? Is it not often, sometimes, or more often? Well, I, I never do, but to, to feel like it. Do you feel if you... Yeah, all, yeah, yeah, all the time, yeah. Do you all stop yourself from crying cause, no, you know, no, because... No, because I... dad never cried and he's a tough guy. No, not, not true at all. I, I just don't... That just doesn't happen to me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel hopeful about the future. <laughs> I know the answer to that. Never. In two years, I got I got Walmart. Two years. Um, <laughs> right, here's, a, here's a really interesting one. I have trouble with constipation. Never. I I, I got two. I got uh, two a day, baby. Okay. I feel that others would be better off if I were dead. Oh, sometimes. A yeah. Lot? Oh yeah. Oh that's. Oh yeah. Everybody feels that way. No. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. I don't. There are some people. That Who would be better off better. if you were dead? Some people hate you. Who would be better off if you were dead? Everyone in his will. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Who would be better off uh, if you were dead? Hmm. Name one person. I'd put, put women through bad stuff. I see. You know. Do you think your girlfriend would would be better off if you were dead? <laughs> yeah. The oh whole, yeah. The homeless really? guy. Why? Because she'd be rid of him. Yeah. Because <laughs> you think you're a loser and you're not good no, for her. No, not not true at all. No. Then why why would she be better off? Wouldn't she? Doesn't she love you? Yeah. I but guess it's a bad thing to love you. No, not not at well. No. And why is she then better why off? Why is she better off if you're not there? You don't give her the love she deserves in return? Yeah, she deserves, she, a, she lot, deserves a, lot a better man. A lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that I agree with. Go ahead. Gay, so far, you're normal. Who doesn't feel that way, though? <laughs> I think the gay hobo who Casey beats up every day yeah. on Fifth Avenue <laughs> would be better off. Casey, you keep saying who doesn't feel that yeah. way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, being, no, I'm being honest. Please, I'm the only one who's being honest. All right, go ahead. I feel that I am useful and needed. <laughs> I know the answer to that. Did you screw up your breakfast yesterday? <laughs> so you feel no, that never? No, no. No, um, no there's some things that I'm... That I'm... <laughs> like what? Uh, All right, go ahead, Gary. Yeah. Continue. Uh, I have trouble sleeping through the night. Oh, yeah, every night. That's Dave, this is a weird thing that was happening to me. Like every every couple uh, days, this would happen. I would I would get up and I would think that somebody put a note on my TV. <laughs> wow, wow. Like what? Like if you turn and on I, the TV, there'll be no, a message for there you. There was no no. It was like a a piece of paper. And then it finally, when I got up there, it would never be there. Oh, yeah. You like thought. When you went to bed, that you would wake up and find a piece of paper. No, no, no. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I would look over at the TV, and it would be a piece of paper there. But and it, it would was go never up, there. and it was never there. It would happen all the time. That's mm. called an hallucination. Yeah. No, I think I. But you know, it's, it's not like during the day that happens. It only happens in the middle of, of a sleep. You just wait. <laughs> you know what? I'm looking at Howard. I know exactly what he's thinking. Yeah. He's thinking. He touches my food. <laughs> no, I love you. Though. Oddly, I trust him. No, he, if you, you should love trust him, him. Then you might kill him. No. Yeah. By the way, I'm one of those people who believes I'm better off with you alive and me alive. 
Just right. for the record. How about this one, Casey? I am restless and can't keep still. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what you would say all the time. All the time, yeah. Everybody does. A lot of people do that. <laughs> go ahead. Who doesn't have, like, a... All right, go ahead, Gary. Here's another one now. I get tired for no reason. Who doesn't? I get tired for no reason. Yeah, everybody does. Well, maybe you ought to go give him one of your pills. <laughs> okay, here's an important one. I enjoy looking at, talking to, and being with attractive men or women. <laughs> you have to pick one, obviously. So for you, it would be attractive women. Oh, of course. Totally. I do. Yeah, of course. Who, who does it? Yeah, so, so, far. <clears throat> so far, I'm on the same page here. That li- apparently is the wrong answer. Enough. My life is pretty full. No. <laughs> Who's li- oh, go ahead. Yeah, my life's full. Um, I uh, I feel downhearted, blue, and sad. <laughs> when? Why? It's in general. How did you, an- you you answered these the other day? So yeah, but it's, it's you know it's 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 a little tougher. Like you know doing it. Yeah, all right, fine. You know what? Answer it the way you answered in the right, day. Yeah. Though. Maybe he just you took do. the test you wrong. You feel blue. Maybe he just messed up. He's looking at me for the answers. No, he it's not one of those kind of tests. Here. Dude, there's no right answer. <laughs> what did you have for this one, Howard? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Mary? Hey, listen, uh, Howard. Yes. I used to be a rep that used to sell Prozac. And just to give you a heads up, this guy, first of all, okay, he may be somewhat depressed. He needs a little bit of a mood stabilizer with, hate to tell you, Casey, an antipsychotic, low-dose antipsychotic to take care of those like feelings of hurting people and stuff like that. Plus, that yeah. works, but that ain't for him. And yeah, he needs to go to a psych. Forget yeah, about the should, primary care physician. Exactly. I don't know what he's doing. You should be at a psychiatrist's office. Let and him diagnose Just you. like she said, he he needs antipsychotic drugs. That if your brother's yeah. doing an intervention and your girlfriend, I mean, everyone's coming to him. You must be doing something really weird. You're not even telling no, me. Look at the intervention of his brother. His brother just kicked the crap out. And here's a weird thing too. All that's going on, and mm. and he shows no signs of it here. You know, like he, like you, he's I would normally. I don't seem as depressed or acting weird or anything. Now, no. you know what I do that might make you feel better, Case? Refer to your interventions as surprise parties. <laughs> Ellen, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. I am totally scared for your life and Robin and everyone on the staff. Believe this me. guy sounds like he should be in a loony bin. His brother should kick the ass out of him. I, I'm totally scared. I think Ronnie should check him for weapons and and anything else that he might... That might not be a bad idea. You know what? She is absolutely right. We should put a metal detector. <laughs> yes. Oh, and Howard, so don't, don't eat the food anymore. Oh. I'm, I'm totally scared. This guy is scary. Thank you, Ellen. Bye. You don't have any weird thoughts about my food, are you? Not, dude, I, you trust me. I would never do anything like that. Oh, trust him. You know what the thing no, is? you can trust me, though. I think he loves his job so much that it's the one thing in his life that's holding everything else together. Yeah, but what happens the day he goes click and he's all the way over on that other side where those hey, thoughts are? Weird? I'm out of here. I'm not going to worry about him. Joey, go ahead. First of all, the self-loathing homo is too stupid to know if the Prozac's working. <laughs> It's probably working. He just doesn't know. No, it, it, it doesn't work. Yeah, well, well you got to go to a psychiatrist. Yeah. I'm stepping in now. you got to go to a shrink. I'm not going to a shrink. We're going, going to a shrink. Go talk to See, you know what shrinks are? Be... Oh, come yeah, on. Shrinks are like they're, like, they're friends. They're I'm, being friends. Helped. I'm being helped Where's by a that? psychiatrist, and it's not it's you know, not a relationship they, 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 like they, they, I have they, with they, a friend. No, they listen. They listen to me. No, no. Casey. Can I jump in for a second? The guy, I know, the guy that you went to is not the guy you need to go to. Right. Now, he was a nice guy. No, but that's he's a whole different level. You guys are so off. Casey can't go. Why? Because he's that bad off. He could never go. So what he are we going to do? He won't be going until he's institutionalized. Do we have to throw him in a straitjacket and d- dump him for belt? So what should we do? Should we bring a psychiatrist in here and uh, let him evaluate? Yeah, we'd have to hire one on the staff so he could just spend time with Casey every day. I got, Casey I, not know. Where's Dr. Nars? I got buddies I could, I could talk to if, 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 if I wanted to. Let me add sure. something. Yeah. Let me add. While you're at it, send Artie back to comedy school. Oh, that's a, that's just that's ridiculous. Sure, that came out of nowhere. Dominic Barbara, who just recently had a ring put around his stomach, and has already dropped thirty pounds. Uh, first of all, he has to be told that we all love him, uh-huh. and he has to be told that there's nothing bad because he has to take the medication. It is. But, but no, there is not. No, there is. All mental people think it's bad to take medication. Oh, it is. Yeah, you see. And it, I was, I always to go thought off that. Off of it right now, don't you? It's not I, a sign of weakness. And, you know, all his life, he's always tried to please his father. Remember how strong his father was? What do you, Dominic, what do you know? How, how, do you, how do you know me besides what you hear on the show? Because I hear you it's talk enough. about your father. 
I hear you talk about your mother. No, I don't. These talk guys about- do. I don't. Yes, John. Hey, we just went to the hey. Prozac you know, website yeah. and answered some of those questions. And it says right here, Casey, if you have feelings of wanting to harm yourself or anyone else, please call 911 yeah. or your doctor or go to the nearest hospital's emergency room immediately. Mm. <laughs> it's now, a big block. They got to say that anyway. No, I wanted to yeah, they had to cover their asses, but they're right. Yeah. <laughs> Many people on Prozac who shouldn't be on Prozac do become suicidal. It's not yeah. a joke. Yeah, are you feeling it's suicidal at all? Medication. Huh? Are you feeling suicidal? He's right. I, I would never do that to anybody. Yeah, but sometimes on Prozac, you get crazy. That's the, you see, there's the answer that's wrong. You just said, I wouldn't do it to anyone. The question is, would you do it to yourself? No, I, I wouldn't do that. That's a, it's a selfish thing to do. I wouldn't do that to anybody. Yeah, but you're not worried about you. You're worried about the people around exactly. you. Exactly. You why would you do that to you? Well, I don't care, but I care about the people around me. That's Can you even spell about. suicidal? Let <laughs> <laughs> me you spell it. What? Suicidal. Really? Yeah. S-U-I... C I D A L. That's right. Nice. Nice. You nice. Can't we need spell you. what you are. You don't advance suicidal tendencies, you know, because I. Right. You won't commit suicide, not because you want to preserve your own life. You don't want to hurt anyone exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's bad. So then you're right suicidal. But it should be good enough that I care about people that much to do that. No, you have to care about you. Casey, would you do me a favor? I'm being serious. Yeah. And I'm not. Would you I'm, get a ring around your stomach? I'm not the person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the person to be giving you advice. If you would please call me, I would appreciate it. I want to hook you up with someone who is a very special person in my go. life. Oh, good. So what, so I can tape it and come back and play it on the show? No, no he's being serious. Are you crazy? This guy's a... No, you know, you're being paranoid. He, He's for real. You, you call no, Dominic. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm t- as your boss, I'm telling you to go call serious. Dominic. He, he, and I'll tell you what else. It won't cost you anything. You no. know what you want? You want Casey to get help? What you should say to Casey is unless he gets help, he can't be here. Yeah. No, but he may be cutting the only ties he has left. Hey, yeah, yeah. No, but don't mess with these forces, Robert. You don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I don't know. You I can hope be that here. he likes it enough that he'll do it. Casey, you call Dominic right now. Where are you? You, you I, in your I, office? I'm not, uh, Howard, I'm should. not doing that. You should. I'm not doing it. Why? Casey. I don't want to go yeah. talk to some stranger. I don't know. Casey. What? Do it for me. Do, I'm asking on. you. Well, oh, it means a lot it. to us. I'm asking you to do it for me. Howard, I'm, I'm not going I'm to talk to Casey, have I done things for you? Yes. I'm asking you to do me a favor. Call Dominic now. Yeah, but so he, so where are you now, Dominic? I'm on my cell phone. You know that I'm... And, and Casey, I'll tell you what I'll do a step further. I'll go with you for the first appointment. Oh, I'll oh please. Yeah, help. Hi. Hey, you, you hi. Uh, I'm in here with Casey. Into this. No, Casey's no, no. This in a psychiatrist's will... office and still not cooperate. i got to get him somewhere. This doctor won't even know who you are. So. <laughs> I got mad at one of them. This, this guy was telling me some stuff. No. I walked out of one of them. He's like, uh, you know, you're... Uh, you're just afraid to get close. No, he was telling me something. I'm like, what, what, you, you're fat. What are you talking like, about? He was telling me about my life. I'm like, you're fat. You can't control your life. Well, well dude, just because he's fat doesn't mean he doesn't know anything about no, it. No, it means he lacks discipline. All right, right. That's your father talking. And you know something? Stop your father, it. you don't have to be your no, father. You're a bigger, grown me. man now. Don't judge me. That's what the guy no, was doing. Mean, he's trying to help you. No, the joking. guy was judging me. All right, listen to me. You go call Dominic right I'm now. I'm not calling Dominic. No, and you shouldn't. You know why? You're like, all was... barking up the wall. Casey, I told you to call Dominic. I'm asking you to do me a favor. Yeah, but... I've never asked you to do anything. Yeah, but... Th- and one not thing be, I ask you... I'm not going to give you one bit of advice other than a name and make sure you don't have to... No, so, so what's going to happen is he's going to call his buddy. Yeah. I'm going to go there. Right. I'm going to tell him all this weird crap. No, and he's, he's a psychiatrist. You could sue his ass. He'll be a very rich yeah. man if he does that. Those guys get in a lot of trouble. Let me tell you, Casey, can I say something? Yeah. The guy you're going to call... He's a, he's a psychiatrist. He's in his 60s. Do you think he wants to jeopardize his, all he's done for 50 years or 40 years because he wants to tell me things? Yeah, he, he wants to retire. Tell me anything. Don't be silly. Hey, Casey, can I just say one more thing? You, say, you should go. You really should. But you say you don't want to talk to a stranger. But the doctor who wasn't a psychiatrist who gave you this test was a stranger. He's not a stranger. He's a good guy. How do you know him? Because I know. I go to him. You right. gotta go take a look at the website on Prozac, all the warnings. How about this, Casey? Would you call he did the doctor you you got the Prozac from said you should be in therapy. Why wouldn't you do that? Because he, cause he said he said you should do it as a combination of both because you can relapse if you don't. You know and what, so Rob, why aren't you doing it? Robin, I've, I've tried that. Call that doctor up. Right. This, enough of this nonsense. Casey, go so call fine. Dominic. Go I'll call, call Dominic call. now. I like you, but I, I ain't calling him. No, I got it, I got it. I said you gotta do it. Here's the best thing. Call Dominic, get the number, 
tell your doctor, your doctor will speak to Dominic's friend, and your, do your doctor that you like and trust will show you that this guy is okay. There you go. Okay, she'll make you do it. Bye-bye. Come on. If Just do it. Stop being a pussy and, and, and get in there and do it. You're Stop acting it. like this is is physical or, or something he can control. I'm telling you, he's got real problems. Well, i got to get him into a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist may not be what he needs. Well, hold on. Stop being a pussy. <laughs> Go face the psychiatrist and be a man. What are you talking about? It's, I you heard me. Be people. a man. I don't want you to talk to him. I just want him to evaluate your drugs that you're taking. Get over there and stop being a pussy and get in his office. And you're annoying me. <laughs> Do it. Boy. That's the only way you get to talk to like his no, father. You see what he's laughing like a lunatic <laughs> over there, right? No, Casey, don't call Dominic now. Get out of here. I ain't calling him. Call him. You pussy. You want to get happy, Case? Hey, so you should listen to Howard. You Thank you, David. Howard, oh. and, and if it doesn't work... Evil Dave even does. If it doesn't work, you, you play a lot of softball next summer and take a lot of cold showers. <laughs> David Letterman, everybody, up with us this morning. Joseph, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. No. I've been analyzing this KC for years, man. He's got a big problem of psychogayosis. That's the problem here. <laughs> All right, thank you. you got to answer one question. Yeah. Homo says what? What? Oh, jeez, oh, I fell for it. Got me again. Bastard. Now they revealed I'm a homo. <laughs> All right, Gary, you ready to play this guy? Let's see some naked chicks. I'm sick of this mental yeah, stuff. Yeah, we've had nothing but a mental game. Dominic happened to be right. Yeah, but I'm telling you, Casey's the very kind of person. Well, what do you want him to do? He's the psychiatrist the most and can't get help from one. Stop the All right, but what do you want us to do? Kid needs a beat. I told you, you have to get tough and say, Casey, it's mandatory for your job. You have to be in therapy. Casey? Let me make it look. It's my idea. Casey. Yes. Mandatory for your job. You've got to go into therapy. No, no, no. I, I mandatory some, I for your some job. Kind of, I'll, I'll tell Tom. I know there's some kind of rule against that. You can't do, force me to do something. I, I said, forget yeah. Tom. Don't hide behind Tom's skirt. <laughs> You go, you go call Dominic now. I'm serious. In order for you to feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable around you without you. Why? Call, because you're I like crazy. You. I know. Right now you do. So go call Dominic. I never wanted to hurt you ever. Yeah. Listen to me. Go call Dominic and get yourself over to the psychiatrist just so he can make sure that you get the right medication. That's it. For your job, it's mandatory. Goodbye. Huh? Who you with? What you talking about? Milk crate marauder. Let's go, baby. Outstanding, Private Paul. I think we finally found something that you do well. Now we're having fun. What's your sixth general order? I pity the boy fool, Don't keep my cereal. <laughs> you slimy scumbag, get on your face and give me 25. What? What? How many counts in that movement you just executed? It's like at a nine. What's the idea looking down in the chamber? Hello, you. What's your fifth general order? I'm over here now. I was over there. Now I'm over here. That's a professional. You know, another guy comes up here, he gets all fucked up, drops the mic, trips off his... Not me. I'm over there. And now I came over here. But then I backed up, now I'm over here. You see what I'm saying? What's this weapon's name, Private Pile? T-O-P-L-E-S-S. -S, topless. Private Pile, you are definitely born again hard. Are you proud of me? Hell, I may even allow you to serve as a rifleman in my beloved corps. Woo! Yeah, I'm different from other people. Hey, check out part one of the intern beauty pageant from last week. See my beautiful young interns compete for the most prestigious pageantry title in the world. See them get judged by a panel of overweight schlubs. As they sing and answer revealing questions, plus show off a lot more than we ever expected. Tonight on E! It's very big. It's now, it's happening, and it's current. It's the Intern Beauty Pageant. And speaking of the Intern Beauty Pageant, if you'd like to be an intern here at the Howard Stern Show, it's time for that big announcement again, Robin. Uh, you're really pushing this. Well, Anne Marie said to me, we got to get some interns we to work for free. Applications? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, yeah, I mean, every month, I guess, I don't know how often we get new interns, but it's that time again. So if you want to hang out well, here the at the station. we really need them. Yeah, and actually do real work. Uh, Anne Marie at HowardStern.com. Contact her, A-N-N-E-M-A-R-I-E -E at HowardStern.com. It's all one word, Anne Marie. Uh, apparently, we can't even get this show done without this free labor. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much do all the stuff no one else wants to do. 212-314-9339. Uh, 
Well, it's kind of like, you know, in California, you hear everyone complaining about the Mexicans. Meanwhile, the Mexicans are doing all the work the white people don't want to do. The interns do all the stuff we don't want to do, you know. There are Mexicans. Yeah, right. They do all the stuff nobody else wants to do. Get coffee, bang Ganji. Right. <laughs> bang Ganji, oh. One of them is actually one of the former interns who's, is banging Ganji. Who's going to be assigned to that? <laughs> Uh, who, this semester, I don't know. So if anyone <laughs> wants to bang Gandhi, please apply. <laughs> All right, uh, just a bunch of tape laying around here that uh, might be interesting to you. I thought this was kind of interesting. Demolition Man, the movie, Sandra Bullock, Sylvester Stallone. It was kind of uh, a premonition here. I have, in fact, perused some newsreels from the Schwarzenegger Library. And that time that you took that car... Hold it. The Schwarzenegger Library? Yes, the Schwarzenegger Presidential Library. Wasn't he an actor when you... Stop. He was president? Yes. Even though he was not born in this country, his popularity at the time caused the 61st Amendment, which states that... I don't want to know. President. I read about that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I read about it, too. I tell you, that is some witty banter between Stallone and Bullock. I wonder why that movie didn't do well. (laughs) They're pretty uh, amazing together, the chemistry. You know, they talk about chemistry... McCall and Bogey. And... <laughs> it leaped right off the screen. Why not more movies from those two? They're snappy. Yeah. We never made another movie together. I wonder why. <laughs> um, we played this yesterday, but it's worth one last shot. Ozzy singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, even though I think it was a setup. I still think it's funny. One, two, three, and let's go out to the ball. Come on, calm down. There they are, Ozzy and Sharon at the ball game. You know, Ozzy's a professional singer. That was my point yesterday. Mm-hmm. That I don't believe that he can't sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game and, and, and get some of the pitch and the key right. <laughs> You're not you buying know. it. I'm not buying it. Um, I thought this was funny. There was a show on MTV. They're getting excited about their video music awards that are coming up. Yes. And uh, they have the history of the Video Music Awards. Of course, I'm always mentioned because I was Fartman 100 years ago. Right. But they can't get over it. They love that. Every year it's brought back. Yeah. But I think the funniest story, and I hadn't heard this before, is the Michael Jackson story. Listen to this one. The VMAs was Michael Jackson's birthday. Same date. Coincidence. So Michael's people contacted us. They wanted me to be part of the show. It's his birthday? Great. You know what? Let's work out a great podium moment where we actually acknowledge Michael Jackson's birthday. And it got complicated. Uh, the next part was, well, Michael likes awards. They had it in mind that wouldn't it be great if Michael got this award, this Artist of the Millennium Award. We kind of felt, well, no such award exists. And... We're not going to make it up to have him come. This award thing just wouldn't go away. It wouldn't go away. Then the communication breakdown came because we were pretty adamant that all we were doing was presenting him a cake, a little musical note on it that was uh, shiny because he liked shiny things. And uh, Brittany was going to come out and say happy birthday. It just so happens to be someone special's birthday. I consider him the artist of the millennium. So happy birthday, my friend, the king of She's like, I'd like to acknowledge Michael's birthday. And for me, he's the artist of millennium. And you're like, good. Good, that's good. Wow. Everybody applauses and you're like, that's great. This is going great. Thank you very much. And then he just stepped right into it and gave the speech and you're all like, oh no. If someone had told me that one day I would be getting as a musician, um, the artist of the Millennium Award, I wouldn't have believed it. 
immediately people were like, what did he say? What did he say? Did you give him an award? It's like, no, there was no award. There was no award for Artists of the Millennium. This is really amazing. I can't believe it. Whether or not it was a case of miscommunication from our end or his people's end, he was actually told by someone that he was receiving an award. So the poor guy actually did believe he was receiving an Artist of the Millennium Award. I think this is a case where your management wasn't really true to heart. So you can't really blame him as much. I don't think he ever got the note that this was happening. God bless you. Thank you. Later on, um, you know, that incident with Michael and his baby in Germany. Um, if you read the stories closely, he was there to accept the Artist of the Millennium Award. Ah, it's funny. That's a riot. Yeah, he's pathetic. He wants awards. He loves getting awards. Jeez, he's an oddball. I mean, but like unbelievable oddball. Yeah, you can't even reel him in anymore. No. He's so far out there. He's way gone. <laughs> I would like an Artist of Millennium Award. Yeah, well, you don't have one. What part of that don't you understand, you whack job? And then they do mention me in my Fart Man appearance yet again. You want to hear that? Yeah. Okay. By the way, the girl in this piece mentions a story I don't even remember, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I just don't remember it. Okay. The crowd would also go crazy for another celebrity pair. A pair of butt cheeks, that is. The Video Music Awards in Fart Man was one of the defining moments in my career. I am Fart Man! When uh, MTV approached me to come on, they said, gee, you know, you can do whatever you want. My feeling was anything Howard wanted to do would be good for the show. So what I want to do is take my fart man character, which I've been obsessing on on the, on the radio. I've been doing it a lot. I would like to fly in as fart. Howard basically said he wouldn't do the show unless he could come on as fart man. Well, MTV here said, what do you mean you want to fly in as fart man? I said, this is going to be great. So what do you mean great? And are you going to show your buttocks? I said, no. No, I mean, not really, no. Do not adjust your televisions at home. This is really my ass. You know, it's one thing to have Howard Stern, but to have him come on as Fart Man and, like, farting, you know, on the air. You know, hey, we're MTV, but, you know, they're, they're, at certain points you like to sort of draw the line. <laughs> I get there that night, and the producer is uh, Joel Gallen. Who says to me, now you're going to fly in, we're, we got you about 50 feet up in the air. Now, I'm up 50 feet. He goes, just get, I go, I'm not going up there. You're insane. He goes, let me see your costume. You know, you, you can't show your buttocks on MTV. I said, no, no, it's, we don't really have the costume done or anything. And, and, uh, you know, cause I knew the funny thing was showing my, my butt cheeks. Cause they are hideous. I, they're cellulite. I don't know what's going on with my butt. It's like I'm a veal. Like I, there's no, there's no muscle back there. Look at my ass. Touch it for power. Rub it. Rub my ass. And I remember the feeling when I was walking backstage after I came down and did this whole thing. The audience seemed to really love it. And yet all the people backstage at MTV who are too cool for the room. You're talking, I'm talking about the celebrities, all the rock stars. And like I passed by Shannon Doherty. She's backstage and Mick Jagger was backstage. And I remember the look of utter disgust and contempt on their face. And I said, you know, here I think I did something great. And now I'm a total loser back here. And that was the sort of the, the, the emotion of the night. <laughs> she had to get you out of there. I don't even remember that. I don't I, either, but she's got tape. Yeah. I have got tape of it, so it must be real. Rub my buttocks. <laughs> I had to do it. Well, it was in front of the press corps. Yes. Which was also rubbing my buttocks. <laughs> Everyone was rubbing my buttocks. It was the the thing to do. Yeah, that it wasn't exactly uh, you know a bad thing. I mean, at least washed my buttocks. <laughs> my buttocks really is hideous. I think it's better now. Uh, yeah, it couldn't be as bad as it was then. You were no. heavier. Still not great. Could be better. <laughs> it's just never been great. But it's funny, and I'm willing to laugh at it, which shows you what a great guy I am. Anyway, so there it is. They they recap that every year because really it was the funniest thing that ever happened on the Video Music Awards, bar none. And they always ask me to come back, and I won't because what could be better than my How buddies? How you gonna top that? Can't top it. It's enough. I did it. I'll leave it to others to define the Video Music Awards. <laughs> um, Gary Garver, our reporter out in L.A., mm -hmm. went out and did a bunch of interviews. It was pretty slim pickings. Where did he go this time? Uh, he went to the TV land, which is like, uh, like Nickelodeon or something. 
It's like the resting place of old TV shows. So the only celebrities we could find were Ken Osmond, the guy from Leave It a Beaver, who played Eddie Haskell. Eddie Haskell. Larry Hagman, who from Dallas, Dallas. And Marla Gibbs, who from, was uh, a maid on the Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Osmond, we've interviewed before, and every time he realizes it's us, he gets mad. Yeah, he hates us. <laughs> yeah, so this is Ken Osmond from Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> How's it going? I'm doing fine. <laughs> uh, ask up questions for Infinity Broadcasting. Uh, broadcasting for who? Infinity. Infinity. I'm not even sure I know who they are. You can ask some questions. <laughs> uh, will you vote for Arnold Schwarzenegger for governor of California? No. <laughs> what, what brings you here today? Uh, I was invited by, the, by TV Land. What happened to your career? Which one? Your acting career. Uh, I got pretty much typecast, and uh, it was difficult to get work, so I went out and got a job. Who was the biggest prick in Hollywood you ever met? Uh, at this point, I'm going to CC uh, interview, okay? We, this is a family show that I've, I've been on, and we keep it in a family manner. Okay? Get one more question. If it's clean. <laughs> what do you personally think of carpet munchers? <laughs> of what? Carpet munchers. What is a carpet muncher? You know what a carpet muncher is? Never heard the expression. <laughs> Just one other question. Is famous poon better than regular poon? No, I think we're through. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. That was the end of that interview. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Eddie Haskell was a wise ass. But this is a family show he did 100 years ago. <laughs> hmm. He says, I'm going to have to CC the interview. What does that mean, CC? Uh, didn't he say cease? He didn't say... Or maybe he said cease and desist. Because yeah. he is a cop, isn't he, Ken Osmond? He was a, a police officer, yeah. yeah. Larry Hagman was on a show called Dallas, for those of you who don't remember. And I Dream of Jeannie. I Dream of Jeannie. He yeah. was master. Right. <laughs> and now he has a new liver. Right. Good for him. Well, here's Larry Hagman with Gary Garver. How you doing, Larry? Good. I'm with Infinity Broadcast. Huh? Infinity Broadcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> Wish I was with them. Is this Gar Grandpa Clampett or is this <laughs> Brings you here today. Oh, meet fans, sign autographs, have some fun. We vote for Arnold Schwarzenegger for governor of California? Well, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I don't know why Arnold, he's a smart man. I don't know why on earth he'd want to be governor of this state. I mean, that's a lot of trouble. It's a thankless job, too. If you weren't in show business, do you think that you can make a living at doing anything else? Probably, but I haven't got the foggiest idea what it would be. Do you think the quality of shows suck on television now because all the money goes to the actor and less money goes to production values? I don't think any of those becauses, but uh, I don't watch television now, so I have no idea what's on the air. What happened to your career? What do you mean, what happened to it? Are you still doing stuff? Well, I'm not retired. I'm simply out of work. <laughs> Who was the most famous piece of ass you ever had? The what? Most, most famous piece of ass you ever had? Um, a donkey named George. Is famous poon better than regular poon? I, I don't think I've ever had any regular poon. <laughs> what do you personally think of carpet munchers? Of what? Carpet munchers. What do you think of them? I don't even know what they are. Have you ever done a black chick? A black chick? A chicken? Well, a girl. <laughs> Oh, a girl. I don't remember, to tell you the truth. Have you ever paid for sex? I never have. Am I, am I missing something? Ever sneezed and farted at the same time? To what? Ever sneezed and farted at the same time? Seized. Sneezed and farted at the same time? Cheese. What does that mean? <laughs> cheese. What is cheesed? Oh. Sneezed. Oh, sneezed. Oh, I have, yeah. I've sneezed and shit at the same time, too. <laughs> How often do you masturbate? Uh, whenever possible. And how often do you engage in anal sex? In the what? In anal sex. How often do you engage in it? <laughs> I've never tried it. Never? How, you like it? I've tried it a couple times. Yeah, it's all right. Is it? You should try it. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Larry. <laughs> sure. Take care. All right. What a pleasant guy. What a pleasant man. Yeah. I can't believe he hasn't had anal. <laughs> I'm from Infinity Broadcast. Oh, yeah? That's great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
Uh, let's go to Mike. Mike, you're on the air. Love to hear from you, Mike. Good morning, Howard. I got a uh, funny news story for you off the uh, AP wire here. It says a young man in Iraq went to a U.S. base to hand in a RPG and two heavy machine guns. He saw the Americans reading Maxim magazine, drooled over the pictures of Carmen Electra, and he traded the weapons for three pictures. Wow. According to Second Lieutenant Charles Hill, he took the pictures and said he would be back with some more weapons for the whole magazine. Wow. Look at what you can do with a Maxim magazine. Well, you got to figure those guys in Iraq are starved. The only guys who were getting any good porn were the sons Uday and Bude of uh, Saddam Hussein. But you could disarm the whole country yeah. with a, an FHM magazine. These guys, uh, Maxim, these guys have no porn. They've got no life. Well, let's, let's, listen, Howard, this is my idea for you. You go over there, I figure, get on uh, Radio Baghdad, yeah. give away a date with a porn star, and the whole thing will be over. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a good idea. I go over to Baghdad. What's wrong with that premise? Yeah, that's the first Here's, part is a yeah, problem. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it except the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I go over to Baghdad. <laughs> okay. That's something I'm looking to do. No. Do you know it's a, it's 118 degrees over there, and they say that's comfortable because it's been 130. Oh, my God in heaven. <gasps> what a country. And imagine, like, like a lot of these countries, not Iraq mostly, but they make the women wear those heavy burkas. Yeah. Imagine what it's like. It must be like a heat tent, like a like a sweating lodge in those burkas. <sighs> yes, Anthony. Oh, no, Anthony. Okay. Uh, Chauncey, go ahead. Hey, Howard. How's it going? Did you hear your roast? Oh, uh, after I hung up yesterday? No. What are you talking about? Bob Levy roasted you. Hey, something's wrong with your phone. It keeps cutting out. Well, I... Go ahead. Two. Back. Do you hear that? Eight to seven. Four. <laughs> and ten. It's annoying. Now, you're annoying. How come you're the only guy who has that problem? Um, I don't think I am. Well, Reverend Bob Levy roasted you. I didn't hear it. I'll play it for you. Uh. I can find it. There it is. It's all the way across the room. You have a great filing system. Don't worry about me. <laughs> here you go. Short C hated. Nice orange hair. When did your mom fuck Bozo? Your magazine is called Stepping Out. It should be called Throwing Out because that's what everybody does with it. Now you got Botox injections. Now you're just a younger version of somebody that no woman would fuck. <laughs> you think every woman wants you. Your dick has seen less action than f Bill Clinton and Nam. Nice tattoo, too. I've seen people walking out of concentration camps with better tattoos. I've never seen anyone that orange before. It looks like you fell into a bag of cheese doodles, and from looking at your body, it looks like you ate your way out, you fat f And you think you're a gossip columnist. Well, here's some gossip on the street. You're a f douchebag. There it is. Wow. Bob Levy. A lot, a lot of anger. Never saw anybody so orange. By the way, you know, I agree with everything he said except for the fat part. And I like the part where he goes, um, that's good. You got Botox injections. Now you're a younger version of, no, of someone no one wants to have sex with. <laughs> that's He's good. brilliant. But, he is. But Howard, will you set the record straight and just tell people I'm not fat? I'm not saying that. Because you know it's true. And All right. What if you all, right. all right. Anyway, anyway I got to go. What? No, I got a story to tell you. Yeah. Do you know uh, Lisa Guerrero, the sideline reporter for Monday Night Football? No, she but wonders. go ahead, yes. She's beautiful. Anyway, this is what she tells me, and it's absolutely amazing. She's keeping a diary of every athlete who's messing around on their wife, and she's writing a book about who's cheating on who. Oh, oh what a bitch. See, this is what happens when you let broads down on the sideline. You, you can't bet. do it. can't do it. Now, how is she going to interview athletes? When they know that she's actually keeping a diary of what she hears in the locker room. Hey, Chauncey, that's nothing. you got to hear this one. What's now, that? I know a guy who was welcomed into scores by everybody, and now he's writing an expose on them. Yeah. Well, if that was true, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not true. All right. Thank you for the call. Okay. Oh, but one more thing, Howard. He's talking about what a snitch right. he is. Right, she is. He's the same no. snitch. Yeah. No, one more thing. By the way, that story is completely false that he just said. And you're a traitor anyway. No, I'm not. That's false. The scores lets this Chauncey in. They treated him like a gentleman and a king. And then he goes over to the penthouse club. 
Yeah, and he switches he's, loyalties very easily. And then he gets on the air. He's talking about how great it is and it's the best place and this and that. After the way Scores treated you, shame on you. You know what? You're like a politician who's in the back pocket of, of Scores. I'm not in the back pocket of anybody. All I know is they treat me like a king over there. So I'm not going to sit and burn those dudes. I'm not burning them. I'm, I'm just, you know what? You might see that as someone who's in the back pocket. I see it as someone who's loyal. No, no. There's no loyalty when it comes to strip clubs. And no, oh, no, no loyalty. Why but, is that? So why do you expect Lonnie to sit there and treat you like a king? And Lonnie's such a nice guy, he still treats you like a king. Um, Lonnie and I haven't spoken in about eight years. Good. And this story isn't about scores. It's about all strip clubs. Whatever. I heard scores mentioned. No, you're crazy. So, I mean, you're talking about the chick on Monday Night Football. You're like that chick. You're a girl. I'm lying. You're an orange-haired I, girl. I wish you knew. You're you orange like a cheese doodle. There's no arguing with you because you have a, an agenda and you can't argue well, with you. Well, I'm right. No, I wish you were. Go ahead, Mike. You're on the air with Chauncey uh, Hayden, the uh, editor of Throwing Out. I mean, <laughs> Stepping Out. Ah, come on, Howard. This guy's a douchebag. First thing he does, you know, he, uh, I see him on Flatbush Avenue at Avalanche, the, the bar, and he's drinking like a bum, getting out of control, picking up. Jackie Connor, you know what? He's crazy. Yeah, I control these people. The bartender, Todd, here to smack him up. All right, there you go. Well, that's true. I gotta, I gotta stop hanging out on Flatbush Avenue. Billy, you're on the air. Oh, uh, Howard, why do you make us suffer with this guy, man? His voice goes right through you like a freaking toothpick. He's crazy. All right, get him off the air. Let's play a homeless game. All right, thank you. Let's play the homeless game. Anything, <laughs> just get Chauncey off. Anyway, Howard, before I go, I wanted to say one thing. Go ahead. Um, David Wells is coming back and pitching on Friday. Yes. And you have to wonder if he went and saw uh, your doctor friend. I, I talked to David Wells off the air. He told me he was going to go see Dr. John Sarno. But he hasn't yet. I don't know that he has or hasn't. I haven't been back, back on the mound this Friday. Well, that's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chauncey. All right, Howard. No books about scores. Thank you. Okay. Nobody needs that. Be a man. Greatest thing that ever happened to a guy is a strip club, and he's going to write about it. And ruin it for everyone. It'll expose what goes on in strip clubs. We spend 99% of our time telling our women nothing goes on there. Right. And he's going to sit and tell them that's not true. Well, he says that what he's really going to talk about is uh, the behind the scenes at strip clubs. Mm. That you don't know what the girls' lives are really like. and what yeah. goes No one cares. And we know what their the lives other are. that's the point. That, uh, They're pathetic messes. think about that. Their fathers abandon them and they drink heavily <laughs> and do, some of them do coke. <laughs> Jose, you're on the air. Howard, good morning. Yes. Howard, uh, I just want to mention something very interesting about Gacy. Uh, number one, you know, the coming out process is a very difficult process. That's right. 95% of gay uh, people that are coming out have uh, suicidal ideations. This is a process which consists of hurting loved ones, and suicide seems like a more logical choice. Right. Um, so you're in some kind of danger there because he had mentioned previously that he doesn't want to hurt people that he loves. Casey, right. how hard is the coming out process? You know, I love these guys that are like so obsessed with gayness. Yeah. This guy is probably gay, and he's afraid. Probably of not. No, probably. How would you know? Takes one to know one. Homosexual? <laughs> no, I, I'm in a field where I treat homosexuals and and help them come out. Sexually? Uh, well, this is something that you should come into the office, and then we can help you, and you would <laughs> most likely be cured. <laughs> Cured of what? Cured of his depression. <laughs> you need an injection. In other words, if he just became gay, he'd be happy. He'd be happier. <laughs> if I, if so, he so just far, if he just came out. All right, thank you, all thank you. Yes. So far, I've been to this ring twice. How's that going? Not once has he brought up anything in remotely about homosexuality. Well, they can't just well, he can't hit you over the head. With it. No, he's, yeah. he's he's been throwing buzzwords around and crap like that, but he hasn't. Said what kind of about. buzzwords? Uh. All right, he said, uh, gay. Nut. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> it's, all right, the, the depression, and then he threw the, the word bipolar around. Yeah. But, you know, but I, I'm not buying into it because I think it's just like, you know, I didn't really. Yeah, why would you buy into that? I didn't know what it, what it really means, but. No. He, Did you tell me like Barbara Streisand? <laughs> no. No, in all seriousness, Casey's got a, how, you're on your medication now? Yeah. What are you on? Zoloft. Zoloft, all right. Is this I'm, the third medication? 
<laughs> no, so he said it's the right, probably the right thing. He said it, uh, this combination of something. I, I, and you know what? I'm not even going to discuss your therapy with you. I'm not going to make a joke out of it. It is funny. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, you're, there's nothing funny about the fact that you probably have, should have been medicated years ago. Right. And the fact that you were delusional and, the and man you're paranoid. Says you're in bad shape. Yeah, and the fact that the guy says you're in bad shape is not funny. He goes, he says, uh, you know what it is to be medicated? I mean, you know, you're really mental. So, oh, come on, you know, every, probably if everybody went to this guy, oh, most people. No. You I go to a psychiatrist. From the emergency room. And he didn't say that you should be medicated. No, no. I go there to find out about myself. It's a learning process. You, I know, you, I know, you, I know you're really about ill. Myself. You're mentally ill. No, I'm not. Some of these guys are pill pushers, though. Actually, yeah. Howard, you're you're functioning. You're doing all right. If you're not functioning, some of these guys just say, well, take a pill. No. Uh, Artie, no offense, you needed medication and you, probably still do. You I and KC aren't far apart. Well, no, not because I wasn't functioning. Right. Hey, Howard. <laughs> yeah. One of the interns here, you know, uh, her sister had to spend the morning with us a couple of uh, days ago because they got locked out of the apartment. Yeah. So her sister doesn't really know the show that well. And she turned to her sister. She's like, "Who's the cute gay guy that sits in the corner?" Uh, no. And she pointed to Casey. So, yeah. The gay, why the gay? Why? Would, I don't, she said. What, what she said you were really pretty and gay. What could possibly wow. be gay? I don't understand. I don't. No, understand. you're gay. You're gay. You're gay. I'm, I, that's nothing. Gay Once about you come me. out of the closet, you'll be fine. See, if oh, someone said that about me, I would just concentrate on the cute part. Yeah. No, but I, but, <laughs> wow, I'm cute. It just it's um, beyond <laughs> me. I don't know. If it, I mean, it's funny and stuff like that, but you know, I, I, I still. Let me ask you something. When you were up in that guy's <laughs> in that guy's apartment taking oh. the nude pictures of yourself, nude? <laughs> Are you talking about yeah, Hans? When you were with Hans <laughs> in his <laughs> apartment, wearing a slingshot? I yeah. wasn't nude in your Did you shave down home? for those pictures? Uh, no, but every once in a while, like you know, probably like three times a year, I got sh I shave my chest. Uh, all right, and then you grease up for the pictures? No, no, I didn't. You didn't oil yourself? No, I think it might have been some. Maybe they spray water on you. All right, that's gay. To be in a man's apartment, dude, it was a job. What? Your... There's no got, job. Did you get paid? Eventually, yeah. yeah. All right. There shouldn't be any spraying of any kind. Exactly. No misting. <laughs> but that's a, you know, it's it's a. All right, that's that's. You sure, gay that was one. water in your hair when you came out of there. <laughs> Uh. Hey, somebody dropped a load. Uh, but you know what's going to happen when he does come out? He's going to lose the gruff oh, yeah. voice. He's going to be so effeminate. I just know it. I'm KC. I'm going down to the uh, gym and going to lift that candlelight. We're going to put some semen spray, water spray. I have pink barbell. Close your eyes. We're going to spray your face. Do you think it's going to be one of those guys? You ever see like, those guys married for 20 years with kids and then they end up leading the oh, yeah. parade? Yeah. Absolutely. He'll be in the lead car what? in his thong. No, no, listen, I don't know whether you're gay or straight. I don't even care. I'm, I thank God you're medicated. I feel a lot better about it. How many of these pills are you taking a day? Uh, one, but he says... Uh, They'll probably up it. Yeah, he says you have to, um, this or a combination or something. You're just trying this out at this point. How long, how long does it take to take effect? Is you he feel said the, two weeks. Do you so feel better? How long have no. you taken them? Uh, a week, but then I didn't take it, uh, uh over the weekend. Oh, here we Why? Go. Why? 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 Because I was, you know, I was on stage and I, and I didn't want him to screw me up, you know? I thought, I thought you said it didn't work. No, but just in case it, something happened. If it doesn't work, then why are you taking it? Because he told me to. I'm supposed to. So then take it like you're supposed to and see if it helps you, you moron. Now I am. Yeah, stop with the, stop it already. I mean, it sounds silly. He is so mental. Yeah. Oh, and you're, and you're not. So mental. No. You're who, like, who, like classic. Yeah. Who in this room is not mental? You are classic. <laughs> me. Well, all right, Gary's the only normal one yeah, here. But, okay, and, and, all right, we're all mental, but you just stay on your medication. Right. None of us have been on medication but you. And and knowing what I know about this from John and stuff, Zoloff takes like 30 days to work. Right. And if you, start, if you start skipping it, it's never going to, you're right. never going to know the effect of it. So John knows more than uh, No, I'm just doctor. telling you, I know about the medication. It takes like a, it takes a month for it the to work. The guy told me it takes two weeks. Oh, right, but it doesn't work it. if you skip it. People are yeah, different. but now I know that. I didn't know that beforehand. All now right. I do. Okay. So wait a second. We're, so really okay, we're so starting. my back. I know. So really we're starting on Monday of this week is when you really start. Now we got to wait 30 no, days for Monday. I started last week. Mm. But you skipped days. Yeah, but then I started it again. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have dumb you sound? What? I took the, uh, what? Now I know. I didn't know. Take it every I'm not, day. I'm an ex experienced person with this type of thing. All right. Well, not, uh, how experienced you have to be? Look at a calendar, and every day on it, you take yeah. it. You can't skip a day. <laughs> I know that. Too. You know what day it is today? Yeah. All right. What day is it? Today. <laughs> What's today? <laughs> what, what? today? What is today? Of course. I know what day it is. What day of the week it's is Tuesday. it? It's Tuesday. Did you take your pill? 
Yes. All right. You know what you got to do with tomorrow? You know what day of the week tomorrow is? Don't talk to me like I'm, I'm a retard. I know what you're talking about. Well, you don't know how to take your pills. I got to talk to you like no, a retard. I, I, that was just on the weekend. What is it, John? These kind of medications you got to take every they day. Also, up. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it has to, <laughs> to build up and stuff. Right. But <laughs> you took it already? Because <laughs> you're just supposed to take it before you go to bed. No. No? They never told me that. Really? Oh, That's not what they said. <laughs> well, no, you <laughs> might take it once a day. Yeah. It depends on the dosage. <laughs> No, well, they, you're supposed to usually take it at night. What are you, a pharmacist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I've been on all these. <laughs> I, I take a Zoloft and uh, I'll whip it. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you don't want to take it on the weekends, what I used to do is try Percocet on the weekends. Oh. Yeah, that's a good drug. That's the best drug ever. <laughs> yeah, but I say you're not supposed to take it with alcohol or something like that. No, no don't. Drinking. You can't you stop drink. drinking. He no. doesn't drink. No, I ain't going to stop drinking. Well, he oh, likes his Casey crown, he like, drink. He likes his Crown Royal. You drink? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, on the weekends, man. Oh yeah. Well, on weekends, oh. I guess you could drink. Yeah. You're not supposed to drink on that stuff, are you? But don't stop taking your medication. Just take it. I'm and gonna. Uh, yeah. What difference does it make? Let's just get him to. It? Let's just get him to take it. Then we'll work on the drinking thing. Right. But now you're taking it for depression, then, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you didn't ask why you're taking it. No, he. T yeah. Well, you know, he told what, me. What led him to believe no, you yeah. needed to take this? Did you, what did you say to him that really keyed him into your problems? If I could only find that special someone. <laughs> you never think about guys? Dude, I'm telling you, as God is my witness. Do you like when the men in the gym look at you? Nobody looks like, at me. Like admire your body? Nobody looks at me. You know when you take your shirt off in the street and men look at you? Do you like it? Don't give a crap. Yeah. You know, hey, his greatest time was in college when he was on the team and they hung out all the time. In the locker room, right? And they in were, the shower. They got to be naked together <laughs> and hey, snap towels. And let's sit on the bench stuff. and dangle. <laughs> hey, you know, you know how good looking Casey is? The couple of women that work here, they were looking out the window. Casey gets right up to 6th Avenue, whips that shirt right off last I week. I do not. Yes, you did. And I'll tell you exactly, these two women saw you, and they looked at each other, and they go, give him a raise. What? <laughs> no, I, I, I'll walk home in a wife beater. That's what I'll do. No, I got a long sleeve shirt. I don't take my shirt off walking down the street. Sure you do. I, no, I don't. You've told us you do. No, I did. Well, when I go to the parking garage, if I'm driving my car, I will. Because you're gay. Yeah. No, it has nothing to do with that. He wants the truck is to see him naked in his car. Dude, look at me. I got a long sleeve <laughs> oh, shirt. Look, there's a 90 degrees <laughs> out now. now. So I, it's a, it's a shirt. Cover up, dude. And we all know your belt. Hey, don't 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 push him. No, no, do I do I do I look look what I'm wearing? Look what I look. Stop how showing I off. Look how I dress. Look. Boy, if I had his body, I'd be I'd be naked walking around the street. Uh, Howard, it's I mean, the guy's like an incredible shape. <laughs> hey, Howard, me and Casey were gonna go to Belmont and just walk around all day with our shirts. So. Oh, oh, what a wow. sight! <laughs> Like I'm behind, I'm behind line waiting to bed. Casey <laughs> would shut up to me. <laughs> well, we're just buddies hanging out. What's the big deal? Tell me the truth. I'm gonna ask you a question sure. and be honest. I'm, I'm always honest. You and your friend in college would hold hands and walk around the campus, and if anyone called you gay, you'd beat them up. Yeah. Okay. At fraternity house, we do that. Anyway. All right. Me and Buckethead. It's <laughs> funny. We're proving a point that you should make fun of people. Hey, let's talk about our general manager, Tom, because we're in a real crisis here. So we had the blackout uh, last week, <laughs> Thursday, and Tom stayed at the radio station and did nothing except run up and down the stairs backwards. Yeah. He said he, he went up and down the stairs looking for food and then decided to walk up the stairs backwards. <laughs> yeah. And I went, why? And That's you when go, you shake your head. To cuss. Big cuss. For a change. For a change. I wanted to change. So um, anyway... Now, I can't get, this station hasn't been the same since. And we don't have any internet. And you need an internet at the radio station because we rely on it now so heavily for everything. You know, we can't even open up, you can't even open up Lotus Notes without being on the internet. Right. There's no connection. So, Gary complained to Tom and Tom started yelling at Gary at first, like, you know, you know, this is a, a, a company wide problem. Nobody has the internet. Blah, 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 blah. So then we called a bunch of the other radio stations in the chain, like uh -huh. WINS and stuff. And they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. We've had the Internet the whole time. Okay. <laughs> because they make it a point to make sure they have the yeah. Internet. So Tom told me this morning, it's not, he said it's not company-wide. Now, now he changed. Yes. Yeah. No, he said it wasn't company-wide this morning. Right. But yesterday, I think some of the guys said it was. All right. But, but then, it's not. Then I wanted to get a hold of the guy that's in charge of the computers, because yesterday I couldn't get a hold of him, so I get a cell phone number. But that's not working. <laughs> and then I was hoping he left me a voicemail. But my voicemail hasn't worked in a week. Oh, jeez. Mm. I'm not laughing. But all the other stations, ha in other words, it's got to matter to you. And this is what I keep telling Tom. It's got to matter to you that we are the only station in the chain that doesn't have 
computers, voicemail. He's saying that it's a, it's a Verizon problem. It's not, and and that that it's just isolated to our area, our area. The move, God damn it! How come our area is the only area? Do you believe that? Should I go upstairs and see if the people upstairs have internet connection? <laughs> like just in another floor, because they're in our area. Yeah, yeah. Go up and see. That's good. I, I guarantee I you they have it. Walk up the stairs backwards. It, um. <laughs> <laughs> but did I mention I was able to walk up the stairs backwards? Scott Salem got something off the internet for me yesterday. No, that was yesterday. Oh, today we don't have we, it. Again. It was off yesterday, and then it came back on until about one in the afternoon. And it's been off ever since. Oh. Trust me, at WINS, the old news station, they've got to have internet. Absolutely. And the general manager, I mean, this is baloney. WINS, they have the fish story. Yeah, we don't have. The yeah, fish we don't have it. Oh, he's unbelievable. And he just accepts everything. Well, he says he's working on it. No, he is. No, he is. He's not working well, on anything. It's just like the carpeting. Everything's carpeted except Hello, our Paul. office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the studio has no carpet. <laughs> you know, yesterday I asked him if he really understood what fully operational meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In other words, the station is running. <laughs> just because our lights are on doesn't mean we're fully operational. And you can't get in touch with the computer guy? Why, and what, what's Tom's explanation? He, that he wasn't sure that about. That doesn't bother but him. when I call the guy, what happens? Were, were we having the same problem yesterday? Yeah, his phone's out of service. So I emailed the guy yesterday mm -hmm. for that hour. Why did you just get on the phone to Mel and say, I want to make you aware that our, our, our computer guy is unavailable to us? Wouldn't you just be out of your mind? Well, I am, but I don't want to get yelled at. No, I mean, if you were Tom. Yeah. But he's not. He's like the most type B he's guy. He's walking upstairs backwards. I want you to relax, Gary, and walk the stairs backwards with me. Mel, it's under control. Ask the wall. <laughs> He'll back me up. That's why he's not a good general manager. He's not can do. He's can do not. See, I have a different theory about this. I think that what happens is the computer guys and stuff, sometimes they, they make it so technical that at the end of the day they, go, they tell Tom, listen, it's just an isolated problem with Verizon. But I think sometimes it's more than that. Yeah. But Tom doesn't know computers. It doesn't to, matter. And he has to take their word and What you do it. is you, t you, you say, listen, this guy can't get it done. Give me WINS's guy. And you call the general manager of a WINS. How did you guys get your internet up and running? Actually, he's the same guy. Yeah, that's the point. How did you do it? How did you motivate? How do you get in touch with this guy? Why is the priority WINS? What, we're not important enough? We build more than those guys. Ah, oh, please. It's a joke. He didn't know how to run this company. Joey, you're on the air. Yeah, Howard. Yeah. Hey, Al, listen, man, uh, KC needs to be on Luvox. Well, he's got a shrink now. Dominic yeah. Barber set him up with a psychiatrist. Why right. are you saying he needs Luvox? Who are you? Yeah. Who would well, talk I ain't to a, Robin, uh, listen, I ain't no shrink, but I'll tell you what, I've been listening to Howard for 20, you and Howard and the whole crew, for like 20-something years. Oh, then you know medication. <laughs> no, I don't know medication. I don't claim to know medication, but what I do know is that what... I listened to Howard go to his stuff, and I went... All right, Dominic, you're on the air. Who cares? Yes. Yeah, I think Casey, is he in the room still? No. Well, he shouldn't worry so much about what the gain is or not. That's irrelevant. Right. The issue is to just feel better and deal with what's going on in his life. And his right. Kids. If it should come out that he's gay, so be it. Who cares? Right. <laughs> I think he's in the right place now to be all right with it when it happens to him. You know, I think he can act that out with the psychiatrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel safe. I feel secure. Can I put on my dress? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I don't really think Casey's we're teasing gay. We're teasing little. him, but uh, I do think he needs help. I think we're playing with fire, but... Right. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, seriously, I wouldn't tease him so much about this. <laughs> How much weight have you lost? I'm doing really good. At Tell me. Well over 40. Way over 40. Is it 50? Like 41? Not yet. 40 and a half. Not yet. But it's doing pretty good. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Have you seen him since the last time? No. Yeah, um, I saw him at about 30 pounds. Yeah. yeah. It's really doing well. So have you changed, like, dress sizes? <laughs> dress? Did you go out and buy new clothes yet? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to buy it in, like, another 20 pounds. He's going to be like Tom Hanks in Big. Right. He's going to have that suit just <laughs> wrapped like a skirt around him. <laughs> well, you know what I tried to do? I tried to wear a belt. Because I haven't worn one in about 10 years instead of suspenders. Uh -huh. So I put the belt on, you know, like an old belt, and I really felt great. 
while I'm walking, I'm like trying to hold my pants up. <laughs> I figured I'd walk into court, it would be the end of my career. All right, well, congratulations. All right, leave him alone. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. That's update a little... on Casey, update on Dominic. An update on our general manager, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like you don't know what this is, bitch. I saw Milk Crate break dancing at the bus stop. Venmo at Milk Crate Marauder. Cash app, dollar sign, Milk Crate Marauder. I saw Milk Crate jumping all around the hallway, banging on everybody's door. What is he, drunk or something? Yeah, he's up there. He's jumping around the hallway there with those little black leather boots on and a little red suit. He's, he's acting like a total jackass. Next thing he's down in my pants, he's trying to pull the fucking the balls out of my pants. I had to whack him in his fucking mouth. What the hell's going on with this crap? Milk Crate Marauder is the shit. I will a death to cock, sucker! <laughs> you stupid bastard.